Welcome to the Exotic Pet Collective. My name is Richard, and today we've got a special guest on the podcast. It's uh, someone I've been following on YouTube for, well, probably since before I was making YouTube videos, for sure. Uh, just crossed 10,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel and did his first ever live stream last night, which was a big success. Uh, so I want to welcome to the podcast our first ever official guest, uh, Alex from Tarantula Haven. How you doing, Alex? Hey, Richard. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for having me on. Um, I'm having a lot of firsts here. Yesterday, I did my first live, live stream. This is my first podcast ever. So <laughs> It's a busy for weekend for you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so congratulations on crossing 10,000 subscribers. That's that's uh, no small feat on YouTube. Oh, thank you. And uh, your live stream went very well last night. Um, I, I think at one point you had over 150 people in there. Did did you get any of the statistics from that? Like what were your, your uh, max stream at one time? I, no, I wasn't sure. I didn't even look at it yet. Um, I think my wife told me it was at 160-something or maybe 180-something at the highest, but I, I have to look. Yeah. 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 It seemed like people, there's a lot of people in there and they're really enjoying it. Yeah. I was surprised. Um, and, and, and I was really nervous. It was, you know, I was just overthinking everything and some things were not going the way I wanted them to. And then that caused me to lose track of what I wanted to say and do. So, <laughs> yeah. So some of it was lost in the process. I understand. Of course, I, nobody I, else would ever know that. Right. <laughs> well, they do now. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> I remember, I mean, it went really well compared to um, like probably my first five live streams. Uh, I think that, you know, when you're watching live streams, there's a lot of things you don't take into consideration, you know, like especially for us because we're, we've got tarantulas, like live tarantulas. So we're, we're paying attention to what the tarantula is doing, uh, how it's reacting, what we're doing, uh, what we're saying. And then also got to worry about is this in frame? Is it in focus? Can you hear me? <laughs> what are people saying in the chat? Like, those are a lot of things to be running through your mind at one time. It is. It, and, and that was the probably the most difficult thing for me was keeping up with the chat. And because there's always a delay anyway. And uh, I think I see it first before it comes up on the chat. But it's just kind of a weird thing. And yeah, you're trying to watch one thing that you're doing and you're trying to talk and interact with your your um visitors there your your subscribers but then um i think the part that that really gets me was trying to i guess keep a flow of conversation going you know not trying to have too much dead air <laughs> yeah it can be that can be difficult i understand yeah and i i really um appreciate what some of these gaming youtubers do and when they're streaming and talking constantly because i can't do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I, I actually thought about that. I feel like the gaming YouTubers that are live streaming actually have it a little bit easier. Like I watch my kid playing Xbox and it's yeah. just a constant narration the entire time he's playing. Whether I'm listening to him or not, <laughs> he's explaining everything that's happening. So yeah. I feel like it kind of comes I, I natural in that situation. Do, yeah, I think it has to do with what you grow up with, you know, because when I played when I was a kid, it was on a console and you weren't really with anybody else, you know, you were That's just true. playing by yourself. And now these kids, they play and it's a community and they're constantly talking to each other. So I think it's a lot easier to keep up that chatter. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, yeah. So you, you've got 10,000 subscribers now on YouTube. Uh, how long have you been on YouTube? Yeah. Um, this will be, I believe my third year on YouTube. Um, believe it or not, last year was only my hundredth episode. So I've only done a hundred videos. Okay. And how, how soon after keeping tarantulas did you start making YouTube videos? Um, let's see. Well, I, I started keeping in about 1996, but I didn't really get serious with it until about 2015. Yeah. And um, I, I had gotten my first HMAC and, I, you know, I kept some new worlds before, but I never really thought about going into old world. Um, I'd see them at reptile shows and things like that. And I'd admire them. I'd seen pokies here and there and I've seen, you know, the cobalt blues and stuff. But it was always a uh, kind of a warning every time I tried to get into one. You know, I'd pick them mm -hmm. up, I'd look at them, and sometimes I'd, I'd get the vendor will tell me, you know, you got to be careful. They're very venomous and that kind of stuff. They're fast, right. so it would always put me off. And of course, my wife would be like, mm, "You're not getting that." So that was the the whole deal. Um, but it was until uh, I met a friend, and uh, I met him through a former student. 
but he kept several tarantulas and he was trying to sell me some. And one of them, and there were actually two HMACs that he was trying to get rid of. And I think he was moving or something. So I went to look at him and, you know, talked to my wife about it. And the more I read about it, the scarier it got because they talked about, you know, the second most potent venom. And, and I don't even know how they measure that, but those were just some of the things that I was reading. And of course, the bite reports that you read and, and so on. But he kept trying to convince me and he said, they're not that bad, you know, as long as you do things correctly and you don't really handle them or anything like that. So you're not really putting yourself at risk. And uh, so I finally talked my wife into it and she finally agreed. So I got it. And at first, you know, it, it seemed pretty cool because I had them in jars and I could look at them and, and all that. But then when it came to rehousing, I got my first experience of how fast and how defensive they are. So it, it really spooked me for, for a little bit. But then, of course, I watched rehousing videos. I watched Tom Moran and how he uses the catch cups. And I watched some other ones, even Petco. And uh, so I started getting a little bit more confident in it. And once I did it successfully with the catch cup and everything, then I felt a whole lot more comfortable. Um, I did the old put them in the bathtub and kind of walk them over, try to try to walk <laughs> them over thing. And they just ended up bolting up the, the side of the bathtub, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't make me feel any better. <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever tried rehousing in a bathtub before. Yeah, <laughs> a lot like of the older videos. Yeah, a lot of the older videos have that. And, and you know, you, you look at those and you're like, why would anybody ever do that when it's so much easier using a catch cup now, you know? So, I don't know. I guess you live and learn. Yeah. I mean, that's it's interesting, um, especially like, you know, making YouTube videos and being part of the hobby as far as uh, being on social media with Facebook groups and stuff like that. It, it's a lot of those old videos and old husbandry advice and, and stuff like that is still kind of, it's, it doesn't go anywhere. Somebody makes a right, post or a video, there. it stays up. So I find it interesting sometimes some of the ideas people come, come up with that, you know, <laughs> it, like rehousing a tarantula in a bathtub or something. It's like, where, where did you come up with that idea? And it, it turns out right. it's a video from 10 years ago or, uh, something like that. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of information out there that, uh, is outdated or people have found better ways. Um, like right. a, as a keeper yourself, like how do you go about determining what's good or beneficial as far as like husbandry and care advice and stuff like that? I guess I tend to look at the, um, I usually will look at the age of the video. That's, that's a big tell. Yeah. And, uh, then of course I, I look at who it is and, and I mean, views and all that does, doesn't really cover it. It doesn't really tell you whether they're reputable or not. So I guess I just kind of use common sense from what I see. And if it looks like it's something that would be successful, then I, I try it and I, I will adopt it if if it works for them and it works for me. So I guess that's kind of how I got into the whole thing with using catch cups too, you know, because when you first start out and you don't know any better, you're just trial and error, trying different things. So are there any, I mean, you mentioned videos, but are there other like websites or anything like that that you use? Um, or I did a lot of searching on that. And um, what is that? Mike's Tarantula or something like that. It's yeah. Like a green page and yeah, just from text. Familiar. Yeah. Very few were, or pictures or anything like that. I, I use that a lot. Um, but of course, a lot of that's really old information. Um, I did look at arachno boards too. And of course, I don't know, it seems like a lot of the stuff is older on there as well. I don't see tons and tons of recent stuff, but I guess you can sort through that. But I have a hard time just sorting through all the stuff on the forums, you know? Yeah. But Facebook groups are great. And, um, YouTube videos are probably the best because you've got the visual, you know, and you've got people actually doing it and, and demonstrating it. So I think that's probably the most reliable way to go. Yeah, I, I've 
found I, one of the first websites I found was Mike's. I wish I could remember the name of it. Mike's yeah. basic. It, I know it's basic. Mike's and tarantulas. I think Mike's. Yeah. Bit, yeah, I don't remember, but it always comes up. It's like the first thing that comes up. So, but just yeah. looking at the website, it looks like it was made in like '98 or something like that. Yeah. Like it looks yeah. like a 20 year old website. But Somebody I was actually on there the HTML other day. HTML skills. Yeah, I was on there the other day, and he had updated uh, the Brocky Belma Vogans to to live coddle. Or however you say, oh, yeah. So I was like, "Well, he's still updating. He's <laughs> like, still alive, yeah." Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm interested to find out uh, who that is. Yeah, because sometimes I think you know it's a zombie website and it's just dead out there, you know. Yeah. But yeah. So if he's still updating. Yeah, I, I was impressed. <laughs> Mike, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people come across that one. Um, yeah. There, yeah. It, it, it seems. I mean, it's something I struggle with. Because I'm trying to build a website as well, and it seems like there's just so many species. With you know, it's it's difficult. Just it's time consuming just to type out all of those uh, care sheets. Yeah. So and it's hard uh, to find. I mean, there's a lot of websites out there like mine that have maybe ten or twenty, but no one that has like a full list of of really good husbandry. Right. Tom's big spiders. You know, that's another one that pops up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he has the time to update his website and do his podcast and do his videos <laughs> and yeah. all that stuff. It, is, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. So you uh, you keep tarantulas. And occasionally, I can hear a bird in the background. Like what? Uh, what mm-hmm. other pets are in your collection? Um, I've got snakes, and uh, I, I've been wanting to get out of my snakes. But I don't know if you've ever tried to get rid of a snake. It's like People will want it, but they don't want to pay for it, you know, mm. and, they, and it's hard to move them. So um, I've just held on to them. I feed them, but I kind of regret it every time because <laughs> it costs money. <laughs> yeah. They're a lot more expensive than my tarantulas. What kind of snakes are they? Um, I have two Colombian boa constrictors oh, wow. and, uh, you know, your typical red tail boas. Um, I've got a California king snake, but it's like an interesting morph. It has a like solid black belly on it. Nice. And uh, it's like they were trying to get a solid one. I did have one that was solid black, and it had a white stripe across its back. Nice. It's almost like a a street, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Just a white stripe. Yeah. And uh, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I want to say five um, corn snakes, and they're all different morphs. Very cool. And uh, corn snakes are kind of, they seem genetic. Anytime I go to a reptile show or something, they, there seems like there's a whole lot of them, and they're not very expensive. But in my opinion, they're one of the most beautiful snakes out there. They are, and and they get so many color morphs out of them. There's so many that I, you know, I've lost count of all the different <laughs> ones they come up with. But um, yeah, I you know I was getting into them, and I like the color morphs and everything. And I've even bred them successfully here and there because they're easy to breed. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, you know, they it's hard to move them too. So I just have the ones that I've kept and I, I quit breeding them just because I don't want to have more <laughs> right. snakes to try to offload and all that kind of stuff. Oh, the last reptile show we were at, uh, or we, my, my wife and I, um, we were, I was looking at corn snakes. Uh, I really wanted mm-hmm. to bring one home and there were so many options, so many different morphs and uh, I, essentially, I couldn't decide and was just like frozen and in indecision and ended up not getting anything. Yeah, uh, but she ended up buying a, uh, a California king snake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that the one that you have there? The one that you showed the video? Yeah. Well, we actually have two. We've got the, uh, we've got an oh, Eastern yeah, king snake, uh, which is Nola, which is in a lot of the videos. And then the California, yeah. it's she, Nola's a, a female Eastern king snake. Um, oh, okay. I can't remember what she named the California king snake, but <laughs> he's, uh, he, He's smaller, uh, younger, and this, uh, he just wants to eat. He, he's not much uh, on being handled, so I, I don't. I don't mess with They're too very much. food driven. Yeah, mine. I don't handle it because it will bite me every single time, and they latch on. They don't want to let yeah. go. Yeah, they'll just grab on and they they won't let go, and then you have to pry them off your finger, <laughs> and the whole time they're crunching on it, you know, and yeah. digging those little teeth in. Uh, luckily, I've never. The only the only thing I've ever been bit by is uh, my ball python. And that's just because he's, yeah. yeah, he's got, I don't think he's all there. And he, uh, he missed his mouse and, and got my hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's, you ever, you keep any ball pythons or? I did. And um, I kind of got out of them 
simply because I feel like they're overbred. Mm. And you have all the ones, the morphs that have the issues with the stargazing and all that kind of stuff. So I just completely moved away from them. I, 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 I like them. I like the way they look and everything. But yeah, it's just, you know, I didn't want to keep, keep going on with that. I understand. Yeah, it, that was another one of uh, one of the moderators of the Facebook group. Is uh, her name's Kylie Kylie Banson, and and she bought a ball python at the NARBC. And my wife, she was like showing it to us, and my wife fell in love with it. And just like, oh, that's yeah. adorable. And uh, this was a, a different one. One of the fewer times, uh, I think it was like the the one previous to her getting the Kylie. Um, but Kylie was nice enough to tell her that well, this had you know her brother's still for sale. So I ended up walking over to the guy's booth. He gave us a pretty good deal on it. Oh, yeah. But, like, I never had any desire to keep snakes, really. Like, they, they yeah. just seemed a little too high maintenance. And, um, and they can be, yeah. yeah. But my wife wanted them. And it's really hard for me to say no when she wants a pet when I have hundreds of tarantulas <laughs> and scorpions. Yours, yeah. Like, no, that, we can't get another pet. <laughs> like, who right. am I really to say that? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I let her give what she wants and... I usually end up taking care of it, but uh, it, like today, I, w- I had to go out and uh, get some headphones for this podcast. So I, I go out yeah. to Best Buy, and go to the pet store because if I'm ever near a pet store, there's usually something I need to pick up. And I come home, and there's this like ten year old chocolate lab in our living room. I was like, "What's going on?" <laughs> so she uh, she just adopted a, a dog, and and. You know, she didn't. She she wanted to ask me first, so I got to meet the dog for. And but it's the same situation. <laughs> like I can't tell you no when I'm getting ready to go right. downstairs and and Ooh. do a podcast with Alex about all, all these tarantulas and scorpions. That's a big dog. <laughs> yeah. So so we got a new dog. I mean, we had two dogs pass away, uh, like in uh-huh. the past six months, just from old age. And my um, wife has an affinity for adopting dogs that are right. later on in life. You know, the dog lives 13 mm-hmm. years, 14 years maybe. And he's, he's a, she, I think it's a she, a girl named Charlie. I think that's, I think that's a situation, but <laughs> you know, she's already 10. She looks old. Um, yeah. But I, she, it, I guess it's harder for those dogs to get adopted. So and she's, right, a, she's a sucker right. for so the older dogs. She feels sorry for them. Yeah. Yeah. But well, yeah, at least so, you won't have them too long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get attached to them and then they pass away on you. That's bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I think it just it's a lot of loss. But yeah. you know, you kind of deal with that in the tarantula hobby though as well. Like it seems, even if you do everything right, you, there's still like a percentage of loss. Um, yeah. Have yeah. you have you had what experiences have you had with uh, losing tarantulas or scorpions? Um, let's see. Uh, as far as like tarantulas, um. I just had my egg sac of my um, Pacillotherius suffuscus. And, um, you know, I felt like I was doing everything right and had them in the incubator and everything. And I think I probably m- maybe should have increased the humidity on them mm-hmm. because when they went from first instar to second instar, I had some losses. And, uh, well, actually, when they went from eggs with legs to first instar, I had a few losses. But it not, wasn't much. It was like maybe maybe four. But then I had a few more when it went from... Um, from first to second and uh they you know they were just stuck in molts so of course that tells me it's probably a humidity issue but overall i ended up with i think 55 out of 66 Mm -hmm. so um still a pretty good yield but I, i hate losing them you know especially that species yeah have you had a lot of males um, uh, well, I did when I bought them. Um, I had four, four of that species and three of them turned out male. Mm. Yeah. So I only, only ended up with the one female, but you know, then I don't know if that's an actual, like if, if they have a higher male to female ratio in the egg sac or what, but I mean, I guess it's 50, 50. But I did have, uh, you know, the, the ones that hurt the most are, of course, when with your own negligence, I had a, uh, a H. chilensis and I was feeding and I went to get the box down and I fumbled it and dropped it. And oh, no. I thought it was OK. It ran around for a little bit and then slowly but surely it just passed away. So yeah. that hurt. That one hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a tough yeah. one. Yeah. I had uh, three of them, 
uh, and they came, they came, those are the ones that came from, um, Fear Not Tarantulas. Mm -hmm. So to lose that one like that, and that, you know, that really hurt. And then I had one that just matured male. So I'm going to talk to Amanda Beasley, see, cause she's got a female, see if she's, um, uh, had a successful pairing because she did pair hers with a, and it looked like an older male because he was missing a leg and stuff. Sure. So maybe I can talk her into pairing it and give me some of the slings. <laughs> yeah. Is that how you, what you normally do when you uh, come up with a male in your collection? Do you breed it or find, I, try to find someone to breed it? I try. I, I hate just letting them go to waste like that. And uh, I haven't really done very many. Uh, I had a Carabana Versicolor that I'd raised from a tiny, tiny sling. And I was pretty proud of it. And, of course, it matured male. So I was like, ah, you know, it just, it, and it didn't take very long at all. It just grew really fast. So I sent that one off. But um, I did a trade with that one. That's how I got my my male P. Cambridge. I to be, breed with my female. So I never got anything as far as any slings in return. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I try, you know, if I have a male and rather than sell them outright, maybe I'll, I'll send it to them and ask for a few slings, you know, or something like that yeah. just to continue having them. I just actually lost a, um, Salmopius Cambridge, um, mm -hmm. and it, it just because it was a male and, and I knew it was, I mean, it's, it lived a lot longer than I thought it would, you know, it was yeah. probably nine months or a year ago it was tapping and I was like, oh man, um, but I didn't, I didn't have a female and where I live, there's, I mean, nobody really like within an hour that I know of yeah. that keeps tarantulas and, um, and it always seems like when I have a mature male, nobody's looking for it. And then, right. like, you know, a couple months after it passes, I see somebody posting, Hey, I need a mature male. <laughs> yeah. and it's like, man. Yeah. Where were you? <laughs> yeah. I, I did though my, uh, so usually I guess what I'm, I'm saying is for me, when I have a male, it's, it's. It's sad in a way because I know I'm, it's probably not going to get mated um, and I'm just kind of like waiting for it, you know, I'm just trying to take right. care of it as long as I can. But I know he, he's not going to live much longer. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's the part that gets me. I, I don't like having them sitting there pacing around and wanting to breed and not having anything to offer it, you know. So I'll try to find somebody. Yeah. I've got a few males that I'm going to try to find homes for here pretty soon. Very cool. I actually had... Uh, like a good, it was one of those uh, moments where, you know, like four or five tarantulas in my collection all kind of molted out male at the same time, yeah, different species, yeah. you know, and it just kind of felt like every time uh, I'd see a tarantula molt, it, it turned up to be a male because um, I don't yeah. spend a whole lot of time because I don't, I'm not a breeder. I kind of find it as a, a like the, the return on investment of the time spent getting the molt and sexing it and figuring that out. Sometimes it just doesn't feel like it's worth it to me. Like, well, now I know it's a female. Like, that doesn't change how I'm going to take care of it or what I'm going to be right. doing moving forward, nor would it if it was a male, really, unless I was planning on breeding. So I don't yeah. spend a lot of time sexing my tarantulas just because, you know, it, for me, it doesn't really make much of a difference, I guess, is what the situation is. Right. You're going to take care of it just the same. Yeah. And, and I'll figure it yeah. out sooner or later, you know, like, either, it's either <laughs> going to mature out male or, or I'm going to be pretty certain it's a female. Um, yeah. So it, it kind of, uh, I ended up with a bunch of males and I can't talk too much about it, but there was this unique situation where, where a guy that uh, I grew up with knew someone he went to high school with um, that works for a zoo and they needed a bunch of male tarantulas for this um, kind of this project they were working on about, mm -hmm. you know, breeding tarantulas. So it, it, it was a perfect opportunity. You know, like I was, they needed yeah, some male tarantulas cool. and I was like, I've got, like four or five male tarantulas that are uh, yeah. are, are mature and uh, new world and old world are terrestrial and on board. So I was able to send them like a nice mix. Um, yeah, that's cool. It, it, yeah. I can't wait to tell uh, people about it, but the, like the whole, <laughs> the whole situation was like, you can't, this is all like, you know, a grant funded kind of research project. And uh, essentially they, they didn't want people to know about it until they, you know, got some uh, results uh, that they can right. use to get their grant renewed or whatever it is. They, and they didn't want somebody coming in and stealing their idea or something. I don't, I don't know exactly yeah. how the whole research part of that stuff works, but it was, it was a cool thing to be a part of and get to work with yeah. them on that. So hopefully. That sounds pretty cool. And, and last I heard from him, everything was working out very well. So it's, it's, it's very cool. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, and I I kind of I do like sexing them to find out um, if it's a species that I'm definitely interested in breeding, um, like my Delicatheles. You know, I knew that I wanted those. I wanted to breed those, and uh, I'd had them for. I guess about two years before I got the first mature male. Yeah. And I guess I keep them a little bit cooler than some people because they say, I've had people say they mature within a year. Oh. And so I waited a little while, but I was pretty happy when I did get some males out of it because I already had some females that were ready. And uh, of course one was successful and the other one, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I was pretty excited that uh, that you had a successful leg sack <laughs> for that species because yeah. that's one of my favorites. Um, I, yeah. I have one, uh, and I had actually placed an order with someone to get two or three. Uh, they were getting some spiderlings in on import, and then it was one of mm. those uh, situations where it, things kept changing. You know, like I placed the order thinking they had them in stock, and it turns out, well, no, I don't have them in stock, but they're coming, uh, and. Then like one thing got delayed, something, and I was just like, oh, let me let me just uh, get something else instead. <laughs> um, so I definitely would be interested in uh, in getting a tarantula haven spider link oh, when well, when they're ready. You got it, brother. I mean, I will send them to you for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's part of the 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 hobby, and that's one of the things that I seem to like about. Uh, our British friends, you know, yeah. it seems like they send each other tarantulas like it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand they're a lot cheaper there than right. they are here because, I mean, I, I don't see a whole lot of people. Well, I mean, I guess they do, but it's pretty close, tight knit groups and they'll send them to each other and that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah I wish and I'd like to have that kind of thing or you know, that kind of relationship with people. And I feel like I got that with you. You know, you sent me some scorpions and anything i have i'll be more than happy to send you and we should uh, give a quick shout out to the tarantula tubers saturday night live takeaway i've yes, definitely enjoyed definitely. being part of that and it's I, I get jealous because they all live i mean i mean they're all in the same country but it's a small country so it seems like right. at the worst they're like three or four hours away from each other i don't i don't know if yeah. that's accurate but it, it that's the way it feels <laughs> Yeah, and that's exactly what, you know, what I just meant. You know, they are so close that they can actually get together and talk and participate with one another. And, yeah, they send them so, send each other stuff back and forth. And, mm -hmm. and that's a really cool thing that they have. Yeah. I mean, I, I was looking, I'm, what, 13 hours away from you, you know? So it's like, yeah. there's there's no, uh, I mean, that, that's like a weekend trip, maybe a week. Right. And I, <laughs> I was so excited when you said you were coming down for the uh, Florida National Reptile Breeders Expo. I was like, uh, you know, tarantula, hey, or fear not tarantulas and Richard coming. So I was <laughs> really happy and looking forward to it. And then COVID-19 yeah. happened. And <laughs> no, no joke. <laughs> I was looking forward everything. to it as well. I guess I, I grew up in Daytona Beach. Or I didn't grow, that's not true. So I, I lived down in Daytona Beach, um, like through my twenties and, uh, oh, wow. like, I, I think I moved there when I was 21 and maybe like 28, 29, something like that. I moved back up North. Um, so going there for that, cause I think that was the one that was in Daytona Beach. I mean, it was like, yes, it is like mm -hmm. half a mile from where I grew up. So I was excited to take my wife and kid down there and, you know, see some people I haven't seen or talked to in, in a decade or more and. You know, yeah. I, I, it was, and, and I got to see you and Fear Not Tarantulas and stuff like that. But yeah, I was kind of bummed that none of that seems to be working out. I mean, right. we were going to Chicago, like to the NARBC, um, I guess that was last March. And my wife kept, like the news kept coming out, kept getting worse, kept getting worse. And, uh, you know, I was like, I took time off work. I've already paid for the hotel. Like, you know, we, everything's ready. I'm packed we're going and she's like maybe it's probably not a good idea i'm like look it's going to be fine we'll wear a mask we'll wash our hands you know we'll we'll be behind a table most of the time you know like talking <laughs> to people selling i bought a lot of merchandise like that stuff's not cheap i needed to go right. there and, and sell those shirts and get my money back at least yeah and uh yeah and and it was um i think it was the night before the, they kept saying yeah we're gonna do it we're gonna do it and then the governor was like nope <laughs> you yeah. know gatherings over Shut 25 people down. or something and my wife was you know she had her i told you so moment <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, i should have listened and now i gotta Don't try to get that? the money back from the hotel <laughs> <laughs> and, 
Yeah, uh, I, I was too gung ho. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it sounds like uh, it would have been a fun experience in some ways, just because uh, I think Fiona Tarantula set up in that in her sister in law's house or something like that, was selling oh. stuff, and and everybody kind of dispersed to you know little shops and and stuff around the area. So that that would have yeah. been, neat, but yeah, um, I I noticed that some people kind of took matters into their own hands and set up wherever they could and yeah because i mean that's a lot of stuff for them to haul around and not have a means of getting rid of it yeah yeah that, i couldn't imagine being a breed because it just from the few breeders i know that shows like that especially that one in particular uh, seems to be like where they uh get the the sales that kind of carry them through the rest of the year you know like, right. like that's the big yeah. the big show yeah, that's that's like their Black Friday, you know. Yeah. They they offload a bunch of merchandise. Yeah, so I, I as disappointed as I was that I didn't get to go, um, you know, I, I was more feeling for those people because I knew a lot of them. Like that, they were taking a pretty big hit. They'd already spent a lot of money just getting everything set up and ready for it, and and, and now yeah. that, that was just the legs were kind of cut out from under them. So it's yeah, I I, I don't even want to think about how many people have been so negatively affected by this yeah so um there was something else i was wanting to talk to you about um so you're breeding tarantulas like uh, what do you do with the tarant like do you sell them yourself do you wholesale them like um i guess what i'm, I'm trying to like because I, i've only tried breeding a few times and it wasn't successful but you know it it seems like uh that's a part of the hobby that more and more people are interested in um, so a question I get a lot, even though I'm not breeding tarantulas, like, well, well I bred my tarantula and now I have an egg sac. What do I do with it? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, go ask Alex. <laughs> but so, I mean, what do you, what do you do with them? Yeah. And, and that was, I, I faced the same question. I mean, I wanted to breed and that, that was something that I had to really think about. What am I going to do with them? So, um, you know, I guess the best thing to do is to reach out to your local vendors or even online vendors. Mm -hmm. um, you got people that are willing to take species and that's a lot cheaper for them than importing yeah. and getting from local sources. So um, I have a few contacts here in Florida and, you know, I'll contact them and say, hey, I've got this species. Most of the time they contact me because they see me through the channel or whatever. Okay. And uh, they'll they'll tell me, you know, I want some of those and, and we'll arrange a price and or even an exchange. Um, I know the last time with my Peak and Bridge, I exchanged for some pokies and a couple other species. But, um, yeah, I've learned that it's not necessarily a... Um, a money making thing, you know. I'm not really breeding them for the money. Yeah. Um, I've talked to a couple of people. I talked to Tom Patterson, and uh, I talked to a guy local here, Alex Fisher, and I really wanted to know how how do you set your prices? What do you know? You know how much to sell them to the vendors for? Yeah. And they, you know, told me in no uncertain terms that you got to think about their side. They have the overhead. You know, they have to buy the enclosures for them or the dram vials and yeah. they have to, you know, they have to take them to their shows and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things involved in, you know, shipping as well. Yeah. So they want to get the lowest price possible. And they said that one of the things that they do is they'll take a look at what the going price is for that particular tarantula and they'll charge maybe a third of that. Yeah. And so, you know, you have a hundred dollar tarantula, you're probably going to charge them maybe 30 bucks, $35 for the tarantula. And it seems like you're taking a big loss because you could sell them yourself. But I mean, you, then you end up being a vendor and you have the same issue. You have to buy the dram vials and you have to ship them and so on. So, it, you know, that then you get to experience that side of it. Yeah. So when you th take all that into consideration, selling them for less, you know, a fraction of what they're selling for wholesale or, or not wholesale, but um, retail, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing pretty good, you know? So right. you might make a small chunk of change here and there, but it helps support your hobby, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's something I, I mean, I always appreciated, but I didn't have like a real appreciation for until I got inundated with squirpling babies and just, right. <laughs> just the process of, of separating them and putting them in their own tiny little enclosures and then 
having to make sure that there's plenty of humidity and, uh, you know, feeding them. Like you got to feed a hundred and some terrain or scorpions. Like there's my yeah. night, you know, and you got to feed them little guys too, you know? So, yeah. So there, it brings up a whole new set of issues. So you got to make sure you're ready for that. And, um, you know, I don't just breed anything like I've got my Lassidora Parhibana mm -hmm. and I'm not going to breed her. <laughs> yeah, don't blame me. yeah, they tell me it's a Brazilian species. You should breed it because you can't import them, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to be short of LPs anytime soon. So no, if it comes so. to that, then I'll breed her. But I'm not ready to take on 1,500, 2,000 slings <laughs> yeah no doubt yeah there's, right. there's a, a few with the scorpions just the the taking care of them and and all the work that went into that you know it really had me kind of like um trying to even figure out how some of these dealers especially like the one man shows you know there's like there's or one woman shows you know maybe them and, and a, a spouse or a friend or something um but they've got thousands of tarantulas yeah. you know and they're breeding yeah. and producing more exacts and you know, that, yeah, I can see that's a, keep a up? yeah, <laughs> would be, and, and another thing, you know, you also have to try and remind myself, I guess, uh, or remind other people is, you know, if somebody imports some tarantulas or they buy an egg sac, there's also a certain percentage, um, that's going to like, it's going to be lost, you know, uh, just like if you had a retail store, you had like one and a half or 3% of your stuff's going to get shoplifted. Like, I'm sure that there's a percentage of loss for tarantulas like slings that just don't make it like they just weren't strong enough right. to survive you know and especially with yeah. the more expensive species you kind of got to factor that into the retail price as well like i may lose one out of every hundred just because they weren't strong enough to survive yeah yeah so uh, and and yeah that's something definitely that you have to take into consideration is how much they're going to lose just from having them keeping them you fall behind schedule, you know, if you can't keep up with all the feedings and everything, um, you get to a certain point, you're going to have to hire on help, you know, so that just adds to your bill. <laughs> yeah. So it's definitely not a, a, a career that I really want to get into, you know, but right. the people that are breeding and dealing. Uh, it, yeah. And I think it'd be even more difficult with some of these uh, higher humidity species or, you know, the, like the tarantulas that need more humidity yeah. um, or your large species you right. know housing several of those i you know i couldn't imagine i don't have the space for it yeah i, I barely have the space for what i'm doing right now <laughs> yeah so, and one thing i more. love seeing is um when fear not tarantulas when um when tanya posts pictures of them when they get a new import and you see the pictures of them in that room and everybody's working on something you know yeah. It, it really puts that into perspective because it's a it's a big endeavor. It's not just one person sitting there opening enclosures and you know putting them in there or opening tubs and putting them in their enclosures. Right. You got a whole team of people that's that's working on this stuff. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's, I guess I'll, they're fortunate enough. They're kind of a family thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, that that wouldn't be a bad job. I wouldn't mind working for somebody else that was doing that. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they were taking all the risk, and I just was getting right. my paycheck to play with tarantulas yeah. all day, but. I don't know if, if we're supposed to, if I'm allowed to talk about this, um, but I, I've seen some people posting pictures online that uh, aren't related to them. So I feel like the word's out. But have you uh, have you seen the Fear Not Tarantulas brick and mortar store they've got going? I don't I, think I've it's officially just, opened yet, but. Oh, no, I, I've seen like the one that they have on their on their website, but yeah. I haven't actually seen anything. Yeah. Yeah, different. I think they had like. Um, then like like oh, oh I wasn't a warehouse. I mean I don't want to divulge too much of personal information. Just just from mm -hmm. the, I've gathered from the conversations with her, but um, they moved. They're moving their operation into a, a storefront in Virginia Beach, and they got the sign oh, up wow. on the wall. I think uh, I think Jeff Jeff Summerhill. Shout out to you if you're listening. <laughs> but he posted a picture, so it's is all his fault. <laughs> I didn't I didn't divulge anything that he didn't <laughs> hey, already he, tell he everybody. Put it out there. Yeah, he posted a picture. Uh, I think he, it looked like he took from his car as he was driving by or something like that. You can see the bushes, and then you can see the Fear Not Tarantulas uh, lit, lit up sign on the on That's the, cool. the building there. So I'm I'm pretty stoked. I mean, I, Yeah, because I think the one that they have on their website is not actually like a tarantula shop. I think it's mm -hmm. a pet shop, right? It's not just— Oh, that, yeah. That was um, just like a, yeah, an exotic pet store in Virginia Beach. Right. They kind of were like working with. 
but yeah, yeah. yeah she's opening up her own uh, her own brick and mortar retail store selling tarantulas and uh, I mean, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I am not a huge fan of Virginia Beach. Like, I would rather go to Florida any day, but <laughs> I, I may have to to make a trip to Virginia Beach. Yeah, that that would be something well worth the trip. Yeah, and it's like. I'm I'm not close, like I'm not related to Tony, even though we have the same last name. But people get that confused right. all the time. They think I'm a brother or a husband or yeah, you know, a you kid. Get like the it, rumors. It's all, all <laughs> it, the things people come up with. I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't even know her until after I started buying tarantulas from her. Got a business card that said Tanya Stewart. I was like, oh, sweet. We have the yeah. same last name. Maybe I can get a discount. And yeah, that, that didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, they're good people. Happen. She took she took good care of me. So I, I always try no, to pay repay the favor. She's uh-huh. great. She she does take care of you though. She she gave me an H Chalensis as a freebie and that was like one of my first videos. I was doing mm-hmm. video at that uh Reptile Breeders Expo and I bought two and she threw one and so yeah. Was that the one you were shooting <laughs> with a GoPro or something like that? I uh, I believe yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember yeah. watching that one. Oh crappy video. <laughs> <laughs> but she uh what was I gonna say? Um we're not we're not related, right? So that that was the first thing I wanted to just get out there. Hopefully, kind of yeah. clear that up. But she is like I'm in West Virginia, and she's in Virginia, which are two separate states for uh, people that don't know that. <laughs> but mm-hmm. like North and South Dakota, but it's um, I'm like in the very northern part of the state. Yeah, you know, she's on the coast, and it it's I think it's about a seven hour drive, something like that, to Virginia Beach. But if oh, I wow. were to fly to Virginia Beach, you know, it's when you take into consideration getting to the airport early and the flight time and, and all that stuff, it ends up taking about six, seven hours to get there. <laughs> like it's <laughs> it's because the airport's like an hour away. And yeah. You know, and, and like, we've talked about going down there a few times, even before she opened up the store. Um, just cause I thought that would make a cool video, like a little behind yeah. the scenes, what's going on there and trying to convince her to let me do it. And trying to convince my wife to be like, let's take a trip to Virginia beach. And uh, yeah. And that was, that was like the biggest um uh like roadblock is that you know it, it's as expensive to drive as it is to fly and it also takes a you know not flying doesn't mm-hmm. really save you much more money so it's like are we going to drive or are we going to fly and then you know all this covid stuff happened so and, and just yeah. never really took off the ground but well, it, it was kind of frustrating when, if things get better maybe we can organize a trip or something yeah <laughs> and go pay him a visit that would be cool we need to do some kind of yeah. like uh tarantula community meetup or something you know yeah <laughs> that was actually something uh, i was I, I work right next to this like convention hall uh where they do like weddings and stuff like that and they got a cool bakery downstairs and the you know it's a, a husband and wife that own it they're they're very nice uh they kind of adopted me as their uh their business grandson or something like that. You know? <laughs> like they'll bring me lunch at work and for, for no, I don't even order it. She's just like, Hey, I think you need lunch. I've seen you here all day. So they have this, um, they have this banquet room kind of, uh, you know, for that they rent out and they were struggling uh, because of COVID. They couldn't have weddings. They couldn't have conventions and stuff like that. And I, w- I was talking to him. I was like, this would be a really cool place to, to have like a tarantula collective uh, kind of convention, bring in a bunch of tarantula dealers and people that make enclosures and, you know, and get people, you know, to, to come in kind of, you know, like a reptile expo, but just tarantulas. Um, yeah. But I, I was like, I don't know if I can convince hundreds of people to come to small town, West Virginia <laughs> for a, yeah. uh, a tarantula convention. Like might actually have to do that in <laughs> Pittsburgh or something, Columbus or Cleveland, something when they, the larger cities around to actually make it seem, um, uh, legitimate, I guess. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Well, you I, never know. You gotta know? start somewhere, I guess. Yeah. Gotta people will somewhere. travel for stuff. So, do you have a whole lot of? Uh, somebody was asking this on on uh, the Facebook group um, a few days ago. Uh, they were they're struggling with high, or I don't even think they were struggling. I think they were uh, nervous about getting high humidity species. You know, like um, the Theraphosa sturmi or Blondi or some of the Pamphibeta species. Uh, what kind of experience? Uh, have you had with high humidity species? Well, you know, I tended to avoid them and um, I don't keep any theraphosis simply because of that. And the same guy that introduced me to old worlds, um, he had a, a theraphosis, a theraphosis sturmy. Yeah. And 
every time it molted, it would break its fangs. Oh, geez. And I think it was because he wasn't keeping the humidity high enough. But yeah, he yeah. ended up having to squish, you know, roaches and, and mm. feed it like that and keep it alive. And it finally did grow them back. But it was just scary to me to think about, you know, if you don't watch the humidity, if, if it gets stuck in a molt or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, w- I wouldn't want to have to deal with anything like that. But I do keep some that I suppose are high humidity. Um, I've got my Orphanacus uh, Filipinas. I've got, uh, I just recently got a um, uh, Cobalt Blue. Um, and, oh, I got that um, Zenesis uh, Intermedia. I oh, think okay. from yeah, from Fear Not. That was the one I got in the uh, the mystery box. Mm, so mystery box. you know, I'm getting some, yeah, and um, kind of you know just dealing with it and and keeping the uh, enclosures the the substrate moist. I try not to over moisten. I know you know I don't want to keep it damp like real soggy or anything like that, but. I'm still learning. I'm learning as far as trying to keep a balance and all that. But I've got the benefit of living in Florida. And oh, that's Florida true. is very high humidity. So, you know, things have been going on, on pretty well as far as that's concerned. Yeah. I, can imagine. I mean, I think a lot of times people discount or don't take into consideration um, how the environment of where they actually live plays, you know, a pretty large role in the tarantula's enclosure, <laughs> you know, like the environment inside the enclosure. Um, you right. know, people in Texas or, you know, on the des- desert, they're going to have to struggle a lot more with high humidity yeah. species um, than, you know, someone like you that lives in Florida. Or I keep mine in my basement. You know, that's where my entire collection is. And I live right by a creek. And, and just 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 because it's West Virginia and we're also underground, the, the humidity is much higher here than it is, you know, even upstairs. You know, if I was keeping upstairs, I probably have to worry a little bit more about the humidity. Um, but, yeah, I, I, a lot of those you know, where it is in your house, um, where you live in the world, you know, all that plays a role in how you take care of your tarantulas, you know, especially when it comes to humidity. Yeah. And and that's something definitely to take into consideration is what part of the world you live in. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you've got Florida, which is very high humidity. I will water a, a, you know, an enclosure and, after a week, it's still relatively moist. You know, I yeah. don't have to keep watering it. But if it's a winter time and I got the heat on, that same enclosure will dry out, you know. Yeah. So under normal conditions, the humidity stays relatively high. And I know that if you were to live in, say, California or Arizona, um, you know, anywhere in the desert areas, you're definitely going to have to really keep an eye on that humidity. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, if you can get like one of those thermometers or those thermostats that you can set up somewhere and they read the humidity, yeah, it'd be a good thing to just kind of look and see what kind of humidity you have. Yeah. I actually have one of those. um, It's a, I, I think I even put it in my uh, Amazon storefront as a suggestion for people that keep tarantulas to, to check out. And it's, it's just like an LCD display that tells you the temperature, the humidity, but it also tracks how like the, the, the high and the low. So I can look at yeah. it any time and see exactly how hot and how humid it got down in here, as well as, you know, the low end of it and get like a, a really good idea. Uh, Cause you know, while I'm sleeping, I don't, I don't know what the temperature, how low it's getting down here in the basement. So it gives me that ability right. to, to really kind of keep track of that kind of stuff. And it was like 10 bucks or something, you know, it was very Yeah, and they're not expensive, but it's definitely worth the investment just to be able to look and see what kind of humidity you're dealing with. Because, yeah, if you're in a dry area, you're probably going to be looking at, you know, very low humidity. Mm-hmm. Whereas here, um, I, I'm probably dealing with quite a bit of humidity and that you also have to take into consideration what do you have in your house you know yeah. do you have a lot of plants do you have aquariums you know that kind of thing that just contributes to the amount of humidity in your house no, yeah you, uh, you mentioned you got uh your zenethesis from a mystery box um mm-hmm. now i personally i have never bought uh, from a, a mystery box just because um i think that i struggle with control maybe or you know like I don't, I, i'm not a gambler i don't like gambling 
So, yeah. uh, you know, and, but I see a lot of people really, I mean, they sell out, I think, every time. If you're not does yeah. a mystery box, you see it's real big in the UK. There's a few other companies I've heard that that do mystery boxes. Uh, I mean, what are your feelings on that? Like, do you think that's a, is it fun? Is it a good thing? Is it irresponsible? Uh, like, where do you land on that? Uh, um, having purchased some myself, um, I, I feel like it's fun. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it would depend on where you're buying from and what experience you might have with that, because. I've only purchased from Fear Not Tarantulas, but I do know that other places will do a mystery box. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've only purchased from Fear Not Tarantulas, but I like that they give you the clues, and mm -hmm. um, those clues kind of give you an idea as to what you're getting into. And a lot of the times, you can pretty much figure out because they don't make it too, too hard, you know? And, yeah. Um, just like the Intermediate, they, that one sold out super quick. Yeah. <laughs> people kind of had a, a good idea really fast. Yeah. And you, you they usually coincide with um, an import that they may have gotten. So if you pay attention, you might know, you know, you might be like, hey, I, they got some of these in, that might yeah. be it, you know. <laughs> but Somebody told yeah, me that. they were like, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's the Xenethicist. And I was like, yeah, man, I really want to, but there's that chance that it may there's not that be. Chance. Yeah, and I'm going to end up with a chance. Mexican well, red rump or something. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I kind of pulled one of those last year. Um, they did, uh, the double trouble Tanya's double trouble. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, what can that be? And I was thinking about it and I kind of thought it was one thing, but then I thought, well, I wonder if it's like, um, Monocentropus Balfour, if they're doing like a couple of those. Yeah. And, uh, so I took a chance on it and I ended up with two OBTs. Oh. <laughs> 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 which is all right they're cool yeah. I, I've, I've grown to love them uh -huh. but at the time i had gotten i had already had four and right. then i got the two more in so <laughs> i ended up giving one to a friend wow. <laughs> it rains and pours i guess yeah. so there's it's this uh i don't i don't want to say it's a problem because that would be overstating it being a little dramatic but I've noticed, and not so much with the larger breeders, but, um, you know, it, one of the cool things about buying tarantulas online, um, you know, through websites and stuff is that if you're getting more than a few, they'll usually throw in a freebie, you know? And, yeah. and in my experience, a lot of times that's, you know, a, like a Brachypelma Voggins or a Lossiodora Periabana or something that's, um, you know, or there's a curly hair. Yeah. yeah there's, there's a, they're very <laughs> inexpensive and, and there's usually a whole lot of them when they're, when they're bred. Yeah. So it's, you know, they're, they're trying to, you know, they give you a free one because they've got a bunch of them. Right. But it, it seems like there's people who are buying, like maybe it's their first time buying online or they only have a few tarantulas and the freebie that they get sent is like um, an OBT or, yeah. uh, you know, a HMAC. Like, like I think I've talked about this in a video before, uh, or maybe it was a live stream. Like I've got three HMACs in my collection and I've never ordered an HMAC. <laughs> like I, <laughs> it's not a tarantula. I really, like, I think they're beautiful. I, um, I love that black and white, but they're they're just they hide so much and uh right you don't get to see them and and they're yeah. fast and, and they got that, <laughs> that potent venom and i'm like i don't i don't want to deal with that <laughs> you know the, right the the return on investment didn't seem to match um yeah i think that might be a little bit irresponsible that, and that's just my personal opinion because mm -hmm. if that person didn't indicate that they wanted an old world especially one with that kind of potent venom um yeah, I almost feel like you'd be opening yourself up to a lawsuit, you know, if you Thought got that too. or something like, like that. Because uh, I know that there are places where you might, they might offer you a freebie or even like a mystery box. Yeah. And they will specify, are you okay with old world, you know, mm -hmm. or do you want old world or new world or both, you know? Yeah. And that way it kind of keeps them from, sending the wrong stuff to the wrong people because i mean what if you're buying for kid you know you're buying a couple of new worlds and then they throw in an hmac or an obt yeah and you're like oh well you know it's just another tarantula but if you don't know what you're getting into you could be in a world of trouble right and i think i don't think anybody's doing it um you, you, viciously i don't that's not the right word that's not the no. word i was looking for but i don't think they're intentionally doing it uh i, I 
I think part of it is like they think they're doing something very nice, you know, and they're, they're throwing in a trench that you didn't buy. And I think that maybe, you know, breeders and dealers are a lot more acclimated to, you know, tarantulas, especially the old world. So to them, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, maybe. You know? Right, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. They'll be fine. This is awesome. Uh, but if, <laughs> what advice would you give people uh, that might be listening that are new to the hobby and they just received an old world tarantula as a freebie in their order and they, they're not exactly sure how to, how to proceed? Yeah, I would encourage them to, of course, research that species and find out and if they're wanting to try of course definitely learn how to take care of it and how to deal with it um but yeah if they're not prepared for it then i would probably either well i don't know if they'd be able to send it back but maybe find somebody else to keep it yeah because yeah that's definitely something that a lot of people struggle with to begin with you know Mm -hmm. am i ready for old world and it's either, okay, I got one and I'm going to be ready and I'm yeah. going to learn all I can or, you know, I'm not ready for this, you know, take this off my hands kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, maybe we could, you know, if if you're new and you're buying tarantulas, most of the places you order, you can leave notes or something. Um, you know, I, I always suggest if if it's somewhere you know you're getting a freebie and you don't get to pick the freebie, you know, leave a note that says I'm not prepared for old worlds or somehow let them know I don't want an old right. world tarantula. Yeah. Yeah. That would definitely be something that I would encourage. Um, and it seems like a lot of the websites now are starting to do where they offer a choice of a freebie, which yeah. I think is great because in my opinion, that kind of avoids getting those species that are technically your freebie species, like your LPs and your curly ears and all that. And even though they'll be in those choices, you can choose something else. And of course, depending on how much you spend, you have other species that are a little bit more um, expensive and not necessarily as common, you know? Yeah. That's one of the things. And and I I know I keep harping on fear, not tarantulas. Um, I've purchased from other people as well. But that's one of the things I like about them is they give you a choice in your freebies. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've ordered from Nature's Exquisite Creatures before, and they also do the same thing. You know, you've got a choice as to how much you spend and all that kind of stuff. Nature, I'm not familiar with that company. I haven't tried them yeah, before. Yeah, they're out of uh, Texas, I believe. Yeah, they're not They're not huge, but the guy's name is Jerry. And I always forget the his, I think it's his wife. Um I think it's Lily. Yeah, but they're real nice people and uh they're they're not huge, but I've ordered from them and had great you know, great uh service from them. I'll have to check them out. I'm like not yeah. really buying tarantulas right now, but <laughs> um I I I had some real bad experiences early on. Um and, and I would name names, but I don't even think it would matter because they're not in business anymore. But yeah, <laughs> you know, but at the time they were like the big tarantula dealers uh, here in the u.s oh, yeah. and uh the first time i ordered uh it was all good uh the second time it got a little shady you know like uh, oh yeah there was a few things missing and they're like oh we'll send you what we left off your order and we'll throw in you know a, two or three really cool species so that you're you know not leaving us a nasty review and then i get right. the order and it's just the ones i missed <laughs> like they didn't add oh, anything yeah. to it and i was yeah. like well i'm not gonna create a stink i got what i paid for you know, right. They did have to pay for a second shipping, so it's it's not. And then I placed, you know, months later they were have it was like an import special, you know, one of those deals you pay before they actually get their import. And uh, I don't, I mean, this was years ago, but I mean, I spent like not like a whole lot, like you see people these days. But for me at the time, it was like five hundred, six hundred dollars. Like it was a lot, and a lot of them were like That's buy one money, get one yeah. free deals. So right. you know, it, it was it was probably around twenty tarantulas, a lot of pokies and. uh um, it was a mega Fapelma species. I, it, I was really excited to get some of these and yeah. I got none of them. Like oh. the, the import got seized or something shady happened. The guy was on vacation and, you know, he called me and was talking to me and was like, well, the, I was out of town and the guy taking care of him didn't actually take care of him. So I had a lot of losses and, and, and it turns out like none of that ended up being true. The business, oh. they were just, go, it just so I just kind of like lost. I mean, I got, they ended up sending me some stuff, mostly nothing that I ordered, you know, it was, you know, but I, 
I got the tarant- I got some tarantulas and it's like two hundred dollars store credit or something like that, and then the website just disappeared <laughs> and they were just gone. Wow. And I was like, oh, "Well, this I, is worthless." I think I may know who you're talking about yeah. because I may have purchased from them too. <laughs> yeah, so I, that kind of like turned me off to buy it online. Um, yeah, I, I took a chance on Jamie's a few times. Um, mm-hmm. Never had a bad experience there. Uh, it was just. They were shipping USPS, so when I did, I learned, you know, because I didn't know mm-hmm. that that you weren't supposed to be doing that, and it was kind of dangerous for the tarantulas as well. Uh, I, I, I think it, I, it was because I was shopping at Jamie's and was searching for some species that fear not tarantulas came up in a Google search or something like that. Um, yeah. And I, I ordered an avicular area, avicular area, maybe and a couple other small, inexpensive tarantulas because I was a little shy. Um, I didn't want to yeah. get burned. And they had a really good experience. And, and then just that's pretty much all I ordered from for you know, a few years. Um, you know, not because I was getting a discount or anything like that. You know, I didn't have a YouTube channel. <laughs> it just, I, <laughs> I trusted them and, and I appreciated their customer service and their communication. And just kept, you know, kept going back because they had, they had a good yeah. selection. And through that kind of developed this relationship of, uh, you know, getting to know them and stuff like that. And they were big supporters of the Facebook group and um, the YouTube channel and the, all that kind of stuff when I got that going. So uh, well, you know, I, I fun- enjoy them a lot. It's funny you should mention that because it hasn't really been that long ago that these websites and stuff were around. And I think they were still like the remnants of that old school school. Um, you get these little paper catalogs of what they have as species list. And then, you know, you order from them on the phone kind of thing <laughs> way back in the old days. But, um, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it wasn't really that long cause I'd ordered from this one guy and yeah, the, the shop closed down. And in fact, I benefited from it because I had ordered, um, I ordered three P Metallicas from them mm-hmm. and I ordered two P Sazimai. And when they arrived, I got six P Metallicas and, and, um, or no, I got, yeah, I got six P Metallicas and I got four P Sazimai. So I ended up getting double my order. Wow. And I was like, whoa, you know, this guy threw out a freebie or threw me some freebies. Yeah. And then I went on their website and I realized that this person was doing a two for one because they were closing down shop and they were yeah. liquidating all their stuff. So I ended up getting a really good deal. But come to find out there was some shady stuff going on, which is part of the reason why this person was shut down. Yeah, that's <laughs> unfortunate. Yeah, but it um, was kind of cool that it was not too long after that that I started to discover some of the more reputable sites. And it seems like there's a lot of them that have been popping up. And uh, I think that's really great for the hobby because you've got all these people that are focusing on customer service and, and making sure that your order's good and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just met a guy and he said that he bought into one of those pre-import deals, yeah. spent about $6,000 and Whoa. he has not seen the first tarantula yet. And it's been a while. Yeah. So, you know, you still have that kind of stuff going on, but yeah. And now he's got to worry about getting his money back or, you know, when is this stuff going to come in? And the guy keeps telling him it's coming in, it's coming in, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So, yeah, yeah with, right now with everything on. going on with COVID, I, I don't think I'd be buying in to any pre-imports um, and just, no, just yeah. because you have no idea. I mean, what's going right. on on the borders right now with the imports and, and customs and I like what we're, what I'm using right now to do this podcast was supposed to ship in July. Like I bought it back in March. It was like a Kickstarter thing. Um, and it was like, they said the end of July. Um, and then all August was essentially them just saying like, it's, it's, in, it's in customs. Like there's nothing we can yeah. do. We put it on the barge and, and it shipped from China or wherever it was coming <laughs> from. And now it's just in California waiting to get, uh, cleared and, and for FedEx to pick that up. There's not much we can do about it. Right. And I don't think I've heard more people complaining about, late orders and things like that than I have recently. And of course it's all the COVID stuff Mm -hmm. and even FedEx shipments are getting delayed and all this stuff's getting delayed and people are losing stuff in the mail, which is of course not good for your tarantulas. So yeah, yeah, I haven't ordered anything since this whole thing started. Yeah. I haven't gotten anything new other than from what people have given me. Yeah. 
I actually have an order coming in from uh, the bio dude. I ordered some plants for uh, this bioactive enclosure I'm setting up, uh, which is yeah. oh, wrong hand. This uh, this enclosure <laughs> behind me that's empty is going to be an awesome. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But I, I needed plants, and yeah. I don't know much about plants. And they were kind enough to like put me in touch with one of their um, you know customer service reps that kind of hold my hand and custom made an order for me. So I was like, this is right. what I want to do, and what plants can can do you have that will look good or or accomplish these goals? And so they were very cool to to help me out with that. But they they. You know, I paid for the order. They sent me the tracking information and it's coming through FedEx and it was like being delivered on Sunday. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, why are you lying <laughs> yeah, to me, Yeah, I've got stuff in on Sundays. Yeah, FedEx. <laughs> so I have a feeling it'll show up Monday. But yeah, yeah Bio Dude, that guy's quite the character and he's made quite a name for himself. It's yeah. Pretty good stuff. And then there's a, there's other really good uh, tarantula dealers out there, like um, Pinchers and Pokies. Is, that's pretty much what I'll, I get all, most of my scorpions from. There's a few others. Yeah, but, they got a good scorpion collection. Um, and Nate over at Micro Wilderness has been really yep. good to me. Um, yeah. I know there's others that I am forgetting at the moment. Um, but. I've never ordered from him, but um, KF inverts i yeah, never some ordered good stuff either. about him. Oh, um, Simply Spiders. Uh, Dustin, he took good care of me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah it, so yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. And it, it used um, to be like the only way to find out, you know, who's reputable, who's trustworthy or not was to go to Arachnoboards and, and check those reviews. Right. Um, but it seems, I, and I'm not knocking Arachnoboards, I, I go there frequently, uh, you know, reading. I don't post too much anymore. But it, a lot of those, I, I, I was learning that I was, I couldn't trust all the reviews because it seemed like yeah. someone would start a business and then have all their friends go and leave good reviews. Yeah. You it's know? a lot of it, buddy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but it seems pretty effective. Um, if you just go to it, like don't even make a post, but you know, just go to a, any tarantula Facebook group, you know, and just search for the business that you're looking for. And you're either going to see a lot of good reviews or bad reviews, you know, yeah. people yeah. saying they had a great experience or, uh, people want to know what's going on with their order or, you know, complaining about right. it. Like I found that's, that's pretty effective, but you know, there's a lot of good dealers out there. Um, when it comes to, um, scorpions so much, it, it seems like a smaller community, uh, like yeah. ventures and pokies yeah. is good. And there's a few other, but usually when you're doing that, you're just dealing with a guy and that doesn't right. even have a website that's, you know, selling, he you send you uh, an email with a list of scorpions, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Pinchers and pokies. I, I, I frequent their website just to see what they've got non tarantula wise. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't ever look at their tarantula stuff. Um, I, f I feel like they have a little bit of a limited selection, but yeah. it's, it's, it's not so much that I don't want to buy tarantulas from them. It's just that I'm more interested in their other inverts. Yeah. Um, I look at their scorpions. They've always got hot species on there. <laughs> and uh, I also look at their um, their other inverts. Like they they did for a while. They had some um, tailless whip scorpions. Yeah. They even had Damon Diadema. And I, I kicked myself for it, but I didn't have money at the time, but I wanted to buy some. Yeah. And I just never got the chance and they sold out. Oh, man. And uh, recently they had um, the P. Horrida, the 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 uh, assassin bugs. Sure. And uh, I wanted to buy some then and I didn't have the money then. And then I got some money and they'd sold out. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like every time I, I have money to buy something, it's they're sold out of what I want. So I'm constantly looking at their other inverts just yeah. to see what they have, because I'm going to pull the trigger on some assassin bugs one day. <laughs> I got some assassin bugs um, at the NARBC from Isopod Source. And uh, I, I was like yeah. kind of walking around at the beginning of the expo shooting, you know, some B-roll trying to, you know, introduce myself to some of these dealers and, and get them to maybe, um, you know, commit or agree to let me interview them. Uh, most of them yeah. were like, I am way too busy to talk to you, dude. <laughs> like, I don't even know who <laughs> yeah. you are. Um, but I, when I was shooting some B-roll of their, of their table, they had uh, like the Horde King assassin bugs and some white spotted assassin bugs. Yeah. And I, uh, I had decided like, I think I'm, I think, Dark Den had just he had just made a video about them or something like that, and I was yeah, like, his, his spiny awesome. guys, yeah, yeah." So I, I I was like, "I'm going to do that," and uh, it it was I think it was my I think it was 2019, so it had been my first time ever going, and I didn't really have a full understanding of how expos work like that, and I was like, "I'll right. come back at the end 
and and pick them up. And when I came back at the end, they're like, we don't have anything left. Like we've yeah, sold gone. out of everything. <laughs> I was like, oh, geez. So like yeah. the next, the next, and I think that was my first one was uh, in the fall. So that's spring, you know, like five, six months later, whatever I go. And uh, like I knew they were going to be there. So I just went straight to their booth. As soon as we walked in the door, I was like, you know, Kate, we're going to go and I'm going to buy these. And and yeah. then we'll, we'll go find the fear not table. <laughs> like I want to get there them before go. they're yeah. gone. Uh, yeah. So I, I watched your, I, I enjoyed your video on uh, how to, you know, go to expos and what to do, that kind of thing, because that's so true, you know? Yeah. If you snooze, you lose. Yeah. If you find something that you really want and you're looking for, you better jump on it because it's going to be gone. Yeah. Um, I've been guilty of that myself. I'll see them, and it, usually it's something that other people might have as well. So I'll kind of make the rounds and I'll look at the different prices and try to get the best price, but then mm -hmm. I'll come back if nobody else has it, I'll come back and it might be gone. Yeah. So then I'm kicking myself, but yeah, um, I did that. Uh, I went to, I think it was in Orlando. I went to Repticon and, um, this guy, uh, Mike, he's, uh, exotic kingdom is his, is his uh, shop yeah and he's he's been my <laughs> what, what the kids call it, he's been my plug for <laughs> tarantulas <laughs> since since i've gotten into this you know he's he's my go-to guy where i go to look for him but now i got amanda beasley too so you know it's kind of gotten better yeah but he had some um the damon diadema he had a couple of them so i snatched up two of them and unfortunately you know stupid me thought i could keep them communally and one Ooh. molted and the other one ate it <laughs> oh man <laughs> so i'm down to one <laughs> yeah that's pretty wild it, yeah uh, there's uh there was another invert oh um peter at uh bugs in cyberspace have you ever yeah yeah i look him? at his stuff too yeah i mean he doesn't really carry tarantulas or scorpions but man he's got all kinds of very cool beetles and and millipedes and and uh, isn't that where you got your uh, little trap doors and your yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He he's some got some cool stuff yeah he's uh he's he's, he's a very interesting person just even to, just to talk to you know or yeah. you know he's got uh he started a youtube channel um so he's got some videos on there uh his instagram and tiktok are actually like they're massive like I oh see really how many tiktok subs like followers he has and i'm like oh, i'm doing good <laughs> i got like twelve and a half thousand people and then i look at his wow. and, you know, he's got like a hundred thousand followers i'm like jeez <laughs> you know and, and it's it's just uh you know a lot of um different mantises and and just just cool little inverts yeah um, he's so, he's his stuff is interesting i've seen a few of his videos yeah and uh but yeah i i've been eyeballing like ice pods and and i've been looking at at the different types of spiders the true spiders and you know haven't really decided to pull the trigger on any of them but i do kind of visit i, I have my rounds that i make you know i'll periodically yeah. get on computer and i see let's see what fear not tarantula has let's see what pinchers and pokies has and yeah. i'll check out bugs in cyber cyberspace and i think uh, uh i i look at um oh what's the other one uh oh uh it's it's it reminds me of a movie. What's the movie? Um, dang it, I can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could help you uh, out. I oh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, oh, I look okay. at Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think Pulp Fiction, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, I kind of make my rat rounds and look at different ones and just to see what they have and if they have anything interesting or any good deals or anything like that. Yeah. Well, that was one Mostly of the interesting things. Shopping. Yeah, I, I do a lot of that as well. Uh, it's usually when I'm supposed to be working. <laughs> so, <laughs> but one of the cool things about the NARBC uh, when I, I was getting those assassin bugs is uh, I, I, the isopod source was the the booth. And I believe they're out of Massachusetts, something like that. Yeah. And it was New England. And uh, they were kind enough to, you know, give me 10 minutes of talking, you know, while like in the middle of the expo. and wow. uh, Or maybe like towards the end. But, you know... It, I knew they were busy, you know, and, and I kind of yeah. felt bad, but uh, you know, it, it, where, when else do you have this kind of opportunity? And it right. was a little lull in between customers and, uh, um, they, they were talking to me and were showing me, like, I wanted to see the assassin bugs. Like that's what I was interested yeah. in. And, and they were like, yeah, those are cool, but check out these awesome isopods. And I'm like, they're roly polies. Like who's going to care about <laughs> that? Right. Uh, until they broke them out and were showing them to me. And I was like, these are some of the most colorful and cool look. Like they're oh, not what yeah. I have up here. I mean, like when I think of, of, of isopods, that's, they, they were completely different and, and kind of like I, I got me turned on. I get some enjoyment out of them. 
Yeah, yeah. And those rubber duckies, I, they were like six of them for $200 or something. I'm like, wow, yeah, like that um, is expensive. Yeah. That's way more expensive than I encountered. I, there was a place or there was a, a, a shop in uh, Orlando and they had them and I think they were selling, I think it was like 10 for like 150 bucks yeah. and they sold out. Wow. <laughs> you don't, don't they quote me on that out. price. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't yeah. know if that's what they were actually but they're, selling Yeah, they're, they're super expensive, but I mean, the husbandry is a little bit different and mm-hmm. they're not exactly very quick breeders. So, I mean, they're, I guess, you know, they're not as plentiful as some of the other ones. Cause like, you know, your Porcelio Levius, the, the dairy cows, those things yeah. breed like crazy. Oh man, and, they're, going, uh, they're blowing up right now yeah. here. <laughs> I got yeah, mine are, and, uh, the, I've got the powder orange. I, I forget the, the species name on that. Yeah. But those are like just crawling right now. I'll probably yeah. have to thin them out or get a bigger tub for them. But yeah, they're just kind of fun to watch and feed and everything. Yeah. And um, a lot of people, because I did have like a subscriber, why? what's the big deal? You know, they're just roly polies, you know, but they're kind of fun. They're fun to watch. Yeah. I want to I mean, get some of the uh, clowns. You know, no, the, yeah. Yeah. Me too. They're they're not, it's they're one of those things. Too, that, too expensive. Yeah. I, I, it, what Isopod Source did is just kind of uh, opened up my eyes to that, it, even being part of the hobby. Uh, I think their website's isopodshop.com. And mm-hmm. I should really be reaching out to all these people, see if they want to sponsor the podcast. And so <laughs> we've been <laughs> yeah. talking about them so much. But <laughs> when I, 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 that was my first experience, uh, even thinking, like realizing people were into keeping those for more than in just a cleanup crew. Like I thought you just bought the, you know, dwarf tropical isopods and throw them in your enclosure and, and it, it takes care of a lot of the cleaning and, you know, yeah. this is your bioactive thing. I, I didn't realize there were so many different species that were being bred and sold. And right. Um, and then I met uh, Peter. I think he reached out to me on Instagram or something and wanted to uh, send me a few uh, things in the mail and um, kind of like do like a collab video on the trapdoor spiders. And that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed uh, talking to him and getting to know him. And then he introduces me to uh, Russ from Aquarimax. I don't know if you've ever mm-hmm. uh, checked out his YouTube channel, but yeah. you know, he's got all kinds of great tips on um, on on different types of isopods and inverts. And, and actually, when I got my tailless whip scorpion, that's where I learned my husbandry from. Exactly. Same, same here. Yep. Because yeah. I got mine and he had the best husbandry video that I could find. And it was yeah. like, it answered every question that I had. Yeah. And... Uh, He's very knowledgeable. I actually did a live stream with him uh, a week or two ago on his channel. I watched channel. it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was kind of cool, like, getting to talk to him before and after, you know, like when you're in the green room, the virtual green mm-hmm. room, and, and discussing, you know, what, what we're going to be talking about, what to expect. And um, and then afterwards, you know, it was, we talked for probably like another 15 or 20 minutes, like to the point I was feeling bad because I was like, I think he's trying to like hang up the phone and I keep like, <laughs> pulling him back into the conversation. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I, I, he, we were talking about isopods essentially. Uh, he offered to send me some, oh man, which I can't remember. I think they might, the ones he just, he just did a video on them. He just got some in the mail. They were uh, the black with the little yellow spots. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was like, yeah, we'll have to work that out. That'd be very cool. And, he, you know, he was, a, he was a good guy. You know, I asked some questions. He, uh, he, he was able to answer them for me. And um, I look forward to working with him. I think he's going to be coming on the podcast here soon. So uh, that'll, yeah. be, that'll be fun. But yeah. Um, another one. And I think him, Russ, and uh, this other guy named Wally. And Wally does uh, Supreme Gecko. And I haven't heard that his, one. Um, YouTube channel isn't that big, but um, he's really knowledgeable on isopods, and I, I look to him for for uh, information on isopods. But his web or his channel is Supreme Gecko, but he does he's got the isopod isopod vlog yeah. or something like that, and he just goes into isopods and how to keep them and everything, and he's got some good info on there too. Oh, um, check that out. Yeah, yeah, I subscribe to him and Russ both, and I watch their stuff on isopods because I, I like them. I like to, you know, learn as much as I can about them just to keep them, and uh, it, that just get, I get an enjoyment out of watching them. I got the uh, um, Armadillidium maculatum, I think, is the mm-hmm. the zebra ones. Yeah, and those are so cool looking, but they're slow breeders. I can't get them to breed. The other yeah. ones are blowing up. Yeah, uh, I think it was arthropod. 
arthropod ambassadors sent me, um, oh man, I can't remember the species name, but they're like the, these really large, like just big, huge gray isopods. Um, yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> and I, I really like them. And uh, yeah. I thought they were very cool. I had them set up in what I thought was uh, was good, you know, some good husbandry until I watched, yeah. I think I think it was Russ, I think it was Aquarimax had a, uh, a video on their husbandry and I realized I actually was keeping them a little bit too damp. Oh, yeah. So I, I pretty much just uh, made a whole new enclosure uh, with different substrate and you know, set it up the way he had his set up. And now I've got a yeah. ton of babies. I'm like, Whoa. wow, that's really cool. <laughs> I got a lot Big difference, you, you know, them. major difference as to how, you know, you keep them, what they're going to do. Cause I yeah. mean, they've already been through it. And like, I know on, on Wally's video, he talked about keeping a particular species and then they were like dwindling instead of <laughs> flourishing. Yeah. So he made some changes and the next thing you know, they're start breeding again. So yeah. Yeah. They're, I think the I biggest guess, change I made in that is, uh, one was it was a type of substrate I was using. I think I, mm -hmm. I I got some like isopod substrate, I believe, from um oh I think it was from Josh's frogs. They have like a, mm -hmm. a mix of isopods. So I was like that. I know they'll they'll enjoy that. Um, but I also just added more ventilation. Like I yeah, thought, yeah. you know, they needed a little more humidity, and I just like tripled the amount of ventilation in the enclosure. You know, I like just drilled a whole bunch more holes, and <laughs> and they seemed to really like it. Now I got tons right. of babies. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's really cool. But yeah, I, I look forward to learning a lot more about uh, isopods and millipedes. Am I, I got um, bumblebee millipedes. I changed their husbandry a little bit after uh, watching one of those YouTube videos and uh, yeah. that he, he had uh, suggested. And now I've got baby millipedes. So. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> it, it, it pays to, you know, to watch this stuff. And, uh, you know, kind of like what we were talking about at the beginning of the conversation. You know, bring everything full circle here. Is it, yeah. it really it, it makes a huge difference on how... Um, relevant or recent the the care sheet or care guide or care video you're watching is uh, because yeah, I didn't just like make this stuff up you know like I I looked online and read some like just strange website the first website that popped up and it was saying this is how you take care of these millipedes or these isopods so I, I was like that was at the top of google search so a lot of people are looking at it so it, it must be um, it must be good information and right. so, you know, and then, and then I watched one of these videos that was made recently and realized, no, that, that wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. I'm sure at the time that was how they were doing it, but yeah, you know, there's a, and I think that's, that's kind of what, how you get let down with like the YouTube algorithms and the Google algorithms, like all those, uh, the SEO stuff is they prioritize the videos with the most views or the websites with the most traffic. And a lot of times right. they only have that many views or that much traffic because they're so old. You know, like they, yeah. yeah, they've been around forever. And yeah, they've already got millions of hits on them, but right. they'll still pop up as relevant, and people still keep hitting them. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll I think if you just search into info. to YouTube how to take care of a tarantula, the first thing that pops up is that Jungle Bob like video, like the how cast. <laughs> yes, it's just it's horrible. <laughs> Uh, the uh, one that tarantula cat uh yeah that's the apart. one that's the one <laughs> you know but i mean if you did had if you didn't know anything about tarantulas and you were searching you know that yeah that video has millions of views so you would think right this this, yeah. this is it like this is the uh this is reliable information and, you and, put yeah. them in this glass enclosure and you slap a heating pad and you put a cup in there with a sponge and yeah. you're good to go <laughs> <laughs> um, I was at uh, I was at Petco today. Um, I mentioned earlier, and I was I was grabbing some crickets and uh, some aquarium sand and a few other things. And while I'm waiting you now for the uh, the the associate to come out with my crickets from the back, I'm, I always go to the reptile section and kind of look around, see what they've got. Uh, for whatever reason, my pet store just has a horrible uh, selection of anything. Like, and half the shelves <laughs> were empty. I was like, what is yeah. going on in your reptile department? This is embarrassing. I got to like drive to Pittsburgh to get a good selection, but <laughs> they, uh, they had these new Zilla, um, what do they call them? Zilla. Have, have you seen these, the, the acrylic enclosures the acrylic for tarantulas? Yeah. Put. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you actually seen them yet? Oh I man. Yeah. I don't think you can. That was that was the, the main thing. I was like, "There's no solid bottom, so you're gonna have to like get right. some like epoxy or you know a silicone or something to seal that bottom up." But right. that's not even the big problem. the The problem is, um, 
you're familiar with AMAC boxes, right? You go to the container yeah. store, you get one of those, right. uh, what is it, four by four by eight? I think it's like three and a half dollars or something like yeah. that. You know, like that's what I put my juvenile arboreal tarantulas in. Right. Like they're, they're, they're Zilla band, rubber band together sheets of acrylic enclosure was $25 retail price uh. for a four by four by eight. I was like, how yeah. can I justify spending twenty dollars more for an enclosure that isn't as good? Just because you right. laser cut five ventilation holes on either side and yeah. stenciled Zilla in it, uh, I, yeah. I was like, that's <laughs> that's ridiculous. I was like, well, maybe right. that's just the small one. So I, they had a, a terrestrial. I think it was like eight by eight by twelve or something. It wasn't that big, you know. It was, was kind of like yeah. one of those Pioneer shoe boxes or something, you know. We're not well, the Pioneer boxes for. You, are you familiar with the Pioneer? They sell them at like a Hobby Lobby or you can buy them online. They're yeah, like display yeah. cases uh -huh. for dolls and right. matchbox yeah, cars I, I, and stuff like that. I got some right behind me here <laughs> or right down here. And I think I can go to the hobby shop and get one of their larger ones for like fourteen ninety nine or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and this was the exact same dimensions, um, but they were charging $36 for it. And right. I, I almost like just started live streaming. If they had better, if I had a better uh, signal, <laughs> that been cool. I would have done it because they had the box. Um, pretty much with tarantulas on it, saying like, "This is ideal for a tarantula." Yeah, you know, like we're selling this, so you can put your tarantulas yeah, in. All tarantulas. And it was a uh, it was a Monocentropus balfouri was a tarantula they had imaged the like in the inside of the enclosure, but the substrate was sand, and then there was like <laughs> two huge rocks and a fake succulent. So like uh, the tarantula, the the spot on the sand that the tarantula was like able to do, it was like the size of the tarantula. I was like, why would you advertise this for an adult tarantula? That when right. anybody could look at it and be like, that tarantula has barely enough room to turn around. <laughs> and and that, like, that's what gets me about those, I guess, branded enclosures and stuff. I mean, they've got their good stuff, you know, mm -hmm. you've got your exoterras and all that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, some of those things, it's like, and they only make them like small sizes. They don't take into consideration that your tarantula is going to grow. Right. <laughs> they, they keep them in small sizes and, and yeah, they charge a fortune for them. But, you know, like you said, with the Yamek boxes and personally with slings, I don't really spend a whole lot as far as enclosure for them because yeah. they're only going to be in it for so long. And those Amec boxes kind of make it nice because mm -hmm. they're not exactly unattractive. You know, they look they look pretty good. Yeah. And they you can kind of scrunch them together and, and make a nice, neat, you know, stack of them or, or row of them. And it's not until they start getting bigger that I start really thinking about their permanent enclosure. Right. So I, I try not to spend too much on enclosures as far as for smaller tarantulas unless i see you know it's a dwarf species it's not going to grow then i'll get them something nice to keep them in yeah but yeah it just drives me nuts when they try to charge a fortune for these things and right. they're completely off on husbandry it's just laziness you know yeah. they could do their research they're they're manufacturing for pets right and if they're going to be specific for a tarantula or something to that effect do it right, you know, and, yeah. and you'd probably get a whole lot more people getting the right thing, and you you probably end up with a whole lot less people getting something bad that their tarantula is not going to enjoy or is going to kill them, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in some I think cases, that's what got me is that like you are you evidently develop this product and are marketing for tarantulas, you know, or f you know for inverts, but you didn't take the time to to speak to people that to keep, take care of tarantulas. Like you didn't do any right. kind of research as far as. Like somebody would look at that and be like, there's not nearly enough the depth for any species that's, you know, over three or four inches to burrow at all. Like, it's, right. <laughs> you know, you got like an inch and a half, maybe of substrate in there, an inch, you know, it, it, it was, it was a little ridiculous. And, and yeah. it was and, the sand, I think is what really bothered me. Like, <laughs> who's keeping that tarantula on sand? <laughs> there's a, but it's, it it's the whole one size fits all idea. You know, yeah. here's this tarantula enclosure put your tarantula in it no matter what it is that's yeah. that's what irritates the crap out of me and what really kind of blew my mind is what they were charging like just the price and i understand like they gotta make money and acrylics expensive and you know marketing and packaging and all that and then you know petco or pet smart or whatever they're, they gotta charge you know a lot right. um just so they can make money uh, but i was looking at that and the price of it and and like Tarantula Cribs is uh, a company I've been doing some business with recently. Uh, they've mm -hmm. kind of been working on some stuff together. And 
like they've got beautiful enclosures that are made specifically for tarantulas, you know, that give you plenty right. of depth and, and have lids that lock with magnets or, you know, it was, uh, it, I was like, why would I buy this? Cause my, my first thought was I want to buy this and review it. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, well, I don't want to really do a review video on it. So maybe I'll buy it just so I can roast it in a video and <laughs> be like, this is why this product is terrible. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't really want to spend $35 to do that. Right. So I was like, maybe I can contact Zilla and get them to send me some, you there know, you go. and then I was and like, then roast but, it. <laughs> but then if I did that, like that would just be burning. Cause Zilla yeah, makes some really good well. products, you know, or right. for other things. So I didn't want to like, Hey, send roast me some of your store. enclosures so I can just, complete, <laughs> like just tear them apart. Um, and you yeah, know, that would definitely burn a bridge there. So I didn't want to yeah. do that, but yeah, it was, it was disappointing because I was excited. I, I remember seeing them, uh, some people posting online about them. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like a large, you know, pet, uh, accessory manufacturer. I don't even know what you call those. Like a reptile enclosure manufacturer is making stuff specifically for tarantulas and inverts. And then right. you see it. And it's like, oh, geez, man. Yeah. I think you really missed the mark here. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you mentioned uh, tarantula cribs. You know, it, that makes me happy yeah, I, that you've got somebody out there that is actually, I mean, I, I've watched their stuff on Instagram. They're putting pictures of tarantulas and stuff out there and everything so that tells me that they're actually doing it they're actually mm -hmm. keeping critters you know that we're keeping and they're designing their their enclosures around these these animals you know so they're specific for tarantulas and it just kind of you know why did it take this long for someone to to start doing that you know yeah. it's like i i i take i get it that maybe the invert hobby has not really been the the biggest as far as you know the population is concerned and they're catering more to the reptile people right but they're out there and i guess that le leads me to believe that the invert um hobby is really really growing yeah so now you've got other people that are saying hey we need to start making these things specifically for them yeah which is great because if you have those already set up like that then that takes away a lot of this DIY stuff that we end up having to do just to make do and make enclosure specific for our tarantulas, you know, because even like your exoterras, their exoterras are great, but they're not necessarily set up specifically for tarantulas. Right. You know, they're, they're reptile or amphibian. A lot of people take the screens off of them and, you know, the ventilation isn't, you've got the, port underneath the door and then you've got the top and then that's pretty much it you know yeah. it's not tons and tons of ventilation but i guess it is cross but yeah it's not specific you know right that's something i talked about in the last podcast was you know all the different ways that the, the hobby's growing and uh yeah it, that's it's evident you know by the amount of facebook groups there are the amount of breeder right. websites or like dealers are, are popping up uh, the amount of people that are in these groups, um, but also just the companies that are, you know, like the artists making art. Uh, the, you, there's a bunch of YouTube channels. Like it didn't used to be that many tarantula YouTube channels out there. Now right. there's, you know, easily over a hundred to choose from. Yeah, they're from. popping up like crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then we got people that are actually like, you know, making just enclosures. Uh, Dreamco Plastics. I think they're in uh -huh. Kentucky. They actually, I mean, they make all kinds of stuff, but for whatever reason, I guess maybe they keep tarantulas. They they came out with some uh, tarantula enclosures, but they're yeah. larger. Um, and I, I really like them. The The main issue I have with them is uh, just the, the it, it's so expensive to ship. Like the larger you get, you know, it's a, it could cost you a hundred dollars just as far as like buying the enclosure and then paying for the right. shipping. But if you go to like yeah. a, they usually have them on sale, but if you can catch them at an expo, it's like 40 bucks or something. Like, they're not that bad. Right? Uh, it, they're great, but it's like if you're going to be spending that much and you have a huge collection, it's not feasible. You know, it's, it right. can get into the thousands if you're trying to buy, you know, 20 or 30 of them. Most definitely, yeah. And and I've looked into them, too. Um, I think Tom Rand, um is where I first heard about them, and I think he had a— he had one made specifically. They they custom make them. Nice. And I think he had one for his communal, his Monocentropus Balfouri communal. Yeah. I think he had one made from them. But yeah, I, I've looked at them and and yeah, it seemed like a little bit expensive. So yeah. I've never actually ordered from them. I mean, I've actually 
you can't see them on camera, but I've got a couple of them behind me. My my mm -hmm. inbound four communal. They're they're still pretty young, uh, juveniles. They're in the, the yeah. smaller one, and then I've got a um, uh, what is it? A Brocky Pelman baby in in the larger mm -hmm. one. However you pronounce that name. <laughs> We're talking about that in your live stream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but and they were great. Um, I mean, the ventilation's good and stuff like that. Uh, you know, there there are a few things that I would change about that kind of setup. Uh, like the door can. You know, especially if you're using them as a terrestrial type of enclosure, yeah. that yeah. just the gravity on the on the door, kind of in the middle, that has really no support. That plastic starts to bow a little bit. I mean, oh, not yeah. enough for where anybody can escape, but if you're if you're very um, particular or mm -hmm. you know anal about stuff being completely in line and straight and stuff right. like that, it can start to get on your nerves. Um, yeah, and yeah. that's I why think, I, I think really Tom like, had the same thing happen with it. That's what yeah. I like about the. Um, the especially the large i just got a, a shipment in from tarantula cribs with some of like the, the larger uh enclosures that they make you know like for a, mm -hmm. an adult tarantula like a small new world adult tarantula you know you yeah. can't put like a, a blondie in it or anything but you know i think it's like uh it's kind of like about the size of a five gallon it's larger than two and a half maybe a little bit uh -huh. smaller than five gallon but uh it but the the way the door works like the lid slides in on those tracks and has the magnets in the back that kind of lock it into place yeah i like the, i like the whole magnet thing yeah yeah i mean it makes it where there's no way the tarantula can even like get its legs in between the wall and the door to push it open you know it's, right. and it's locked into place and because it has that support you know on all four sides it's not going to bow you know like yeah. just a, a cut piece of of plexi so i think they did a really good job in designing that yeah and i think i, I think that's an it. awesome idea um and personally you know i've with the uh exoterra's got the mini talls you know mm -hmm. and there have been times when i've closed the door on it but not latched it Ooh. and then i come back the next day and realize oh this tarantula could have gotten out yeah but having those magnets there it's like it's locked you know yep. <laughs> That is definitely, uh, I had a, a Canthoscuria geniculata escape because I forgot to lock mm -hmm. the door on it. I had one of those, um, I think it was the Nano Talls or something like that. Uh, yeah. And, and it, it was small. It wasn't like a big one. Um, but it, yeah, it, it just pushed the door open. Luckily, I was down here doing stuff, you know, and I just kind of like turned over mm -hmm. and or like heard that creak. I was like, what? <laughs> like, look, and yeah. the door just kind of gets pushed open and it starts crawling out. I was like, oh, no, that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it, what never fails to amaze me is how strong tarantulas can be. Mm -hmm. You know, and and when I feed them, like my pokies or, you know, some of the other larger tarantulas that I have, and they grab that roach off the tongs and just yank, you know, you can feel that tug. And uh, and I say this because my wife had a, um, she had a Gramostola porteri that she kept, mm. and she... I started keeping tarantulas, and then she's like, well, I'd like one for the library. So um, she had one in the library, and one day we came in, and it was not in its enclosure. And its enclosure was an old aquarium. It was an acrylic aquarium that we had kind of repurposed, and it had the light um, lid, but it was kind of heavy. So I figured, you know, it couldn't escape. It only had like a little opening where the cord came out for the light, and um, I figured that would be enough to keep the tarantula in. Well, she has a surveillance system in there, and we couldn't find this tarantula. It's just gone. So I thought, well, did somebody come in and steal it, or, or what happened? Well, we watched the surveillance, and that tarantula literally pushed the lid up, wedged itself in between, and like kind of pushed with its carapace <laughs> on that lid. And that lid is not light, yeah. uh, you know, by uh invertebrate standard you know right but it it wedged itself in pushed it up crawled right out and it went all the way to the end of the of the uh library on the other side and we found it in a corner just kind of sitting there wow. and she was not happy when i caught it <laughs> she was <laughs> <laughs> threat posture and like crazy yeah i had a similar situation uh, not not that long ago um i mean it was while covid was happening we uh we took a vacation. No, it wasn't a vacation. It was like a weekend. I had like a three-day weekend, and we rented a cabin like out in the middle of nowhere here in West Virginia, just a few hours away. So we go out to the mountains for the weekend, and uh, my uh, my son's grandmother, he she was like coming by to take care of the dogs and the cats and stuff like that. And 
doing a little straightening up because, you know, she's a grandmother. So when she's at the house and something's out of place, she's got to clean her. Oh, they need to run their vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's like, please don't do that. But she does it anyways. <laughs> so she comes down to the basement, you know, no fear of all the tarantulas or scorpions or anything like that. You know, it's like <laughs> most people would like, I'm not going down there. Um, right. And she's down here vacuuming or something random. <laughs> and uh, she kept hearing this like tap, 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 tap. And was like looking around trying to figure out where the sound came from. And like in the, the back part of the basement, I've got a, a big metal door uh, that goes, you know, um, kind of like to some stairs that take you upstairs to the backyard. And there was, she goes over and, and, and could hear this, like something's tapped on this metal door. She thought somebody was outside and she starts to reach to open the door and looks down and sees this huge Asian scorpion, like the Asian forest scorpion. <laughs> and she calls my wife. It's like one of Richard's creators got out. <laughs> and, and Kate's like, is it a is it a tarantula? I don't know, Kate. It's just one of them critters. <laughs> and Kate's like, I can hear just to her side. Like, is it a snake? Is it a, a spider? Like, what is it? She's like, I don't know. It's just a big black critter. And I was like, oh, it must be a scorpion. And so like, she caught, you know, she grabbed one of the little had, you know, all those little um, critter keepers. <laughs> like, I got yeah. a bunch of those just like laying around. And she grabbed one of those and scooped it up like a champ and put a lid on awesome. it and set it on the shelf for me and came home and I was like, where did this thing come from? Like I look, I check all the scorpion enclosures. They're all locked down. You know, they've got like the, the metal lid on them and they've got the clamps that kind of connect it to the, the sides. And I couldn't figure out, I was like, where, this isn't na native. Like it had to, so I'm like going through all of my enclosures trying to find like, okay, there's a scorpion in that one. Finally, I find the, the 10 gallon aquarium that had no scorpion in it there should have been one you know and, <laughs> and i couldn't i was like it's it's latched like it so the only thing i could figure is that the trench or the scorpion had climbed up the backdrop because i had a backdrop in that one at the time and was able to wedge itself in between the top of that backdrop and the lid and just push up with sheer strength against yeah, those clamps it hold yeah. it and, and was able to sneak out i was like that's yeah. impressive so yeah. From that point on, I don't I don't put scorpions in enclosures with a backdrop because I'm like they can't <laughs> yeah. climb the glass, so I don't have to worry about yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, it was impressive how just how strong they can be. Yeah, and, and I mean, you yeah, I guess you know you don't associate insects and arthropods and all that with strength, but uh, you know I, I guess we should because you know you think about ants and how they carry stuff that's several times their weight and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But yeah, there it's just it's just impressive how strong they can be. It really is. So so what do you got going on in the future? You got any uh, exciting uh, live streams lined up or uh, cool videos you want to talk about? <laughs> Give us a little sneak well, peek. Well, as as far as um, well, sneak peek, um, you mentioned uh, tarantula cribs. Uh -huh. So uh, I've got a little tarantula cribs uh, video coming up. Nice. So I was, I was pretty honored for, uh, that they, they hit me up for that. Definitely. And uh, as far as live streams are concerned, you know, I, I got my feet wet yesterday and it it didn't, yeah, I, I guess things go differently in your head than when they actually happen so <laughs> yeah. it didn't go like i wanted it to happen so at least it's got me thinking what am i going to do for my next one yeah and um i'm sure 1500 or 15,000 is gonna be here like nothing it just seems like it grows every day i gained 100 subscribers yesterday nice so yeah, it really seems to snowball, you know, like the more it subscribers it, you get, the the more those videos get pushed out, the more people see your content and the more yeah, people end up It seemed like it went a lot faster um, here recently. It's been, it, it, and I grew kind of fast. I hit a thousand relatively fast. Yeah. But then it kind of slowed down and, you know, of course I wasn't putting videos out as, as frequently as I should. And now that my schedule is a little bit different, I'm able to um put them out more frequently yeah so i guess i'm getting more subscribers people are seeing my videos more so yeah it's been it's been growing a lot faster lately so i'm, I'm assuming it's probably gonna be upon me pretty soon but yeah i felt a little bit unprepared on the giveaway um most of my stuff is on teespring and mm -hmm. i don't really go buy it and bring it in and have it here so I can show and that kind of stuff. And then yeah. if, like I got the stickers and I think you probably, uh, do you go through sticker mule? I do. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, you know how they always have their little promos and stuff. So, That's the only time I bought. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and I noticed you had you were showing off some holographic ones, and I'm yeah. like, I bet you he got the fifty for <laughs> for twenty bucks or That's something it. like that. <laughs> yeah, so I jumped on that too. So I, I was giving away some of those, but. Yeah, I, I wanted to have a, something a little bit more substantial. So I'm thinking about doing um, more giveaways, like just on the regular videos, maybe just do a random giveaway and send out a shirt or send out, you know, something else yeah. a little bit bigger or or maybe a sticker pack, like, you know, several stickers and a pin or something. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I wish I would have thought a little bit more on that as to how I was going to do it because I felt like it didn't go very well. So I think it, um, went, it went well. But I'm not really sure what content wise people would like to see i know people like feeding videos and stuff yeah. but when you do that live it can either go very well or it can go pretty bad <laughs> yeah i've had it go both extremely well and horribly wrong like especially yeah, like when yeah. the tarantula runs out of its enclosure and it's like well now i gotta chase it for five minutes on camera right. sorry be patient <laughs> once i had happened a, to uh, be with the uh, c elegans last night she yeah. ran out and i had to go chase her and I think the worst was I, uh, somebody asked in the comments, like in the chat, uh, about one of the, I think it was the dead leaf mantis or something that I had. And I don't know if you were watching that one. I grabbed, it was like right next to me on the shelf. So I grabbed it. Uh, but I grabbed it like a, a jerk with one hand, you know, and it's one of those, uh, <laughs> zoo med creature kind of arboreal enclosures. And yeah. I get about halfway towards me and it just slips out of my hand and falls to the ground. Oh, no. So I'm like on a live stream and just, sh I didn't shatter, but it like, it cracked pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh geez. I was worried that I had hurt, you know, the mantis. It, it was fine. It was a little shook up. Like what the heck just happened? But like the whole back of the glass was just, you know, all cracked. And I was like, no, no I got to clean this up. <laughs> I was like, right. Yeah. It's, it was doing fine until I just dropped it. But yeah. Luckily it and then that kind of just shakes you up and throws you off your game. Yeah, right. So it does. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, I, I was, I remember, I mean, my family was all performers. They were like, I come from a, a long line of musicians, you know, mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. folk singers and stuff like that. And that was mm -hmm. something I, I'm sure it's a famous saying somebody said many times, my grandfather would always be like, uh, it never work with children or, or animals. I'm like that was his yeah. big thing. Yeah. And I'm That's like, the showbiz well, thing, yeah. yeah, and we're, here we are. Uh, you know, working, <laughs> working with animals, with animals. <laughs> like, <laughs> and not just any animals, like animals that are completely untrained and and don't really like to be dealt with. You know, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. we're unpredictable. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah. you know, congratulations on on all your success, man. It's really cool seeing oh, thank you. everything going so well for you, and and I appreciate you being on the on the podcast and yeah, you know, I appreciate joining the you live streams me. and yeah. and I don't know, you've you seem to always be around whenever I'm doing something, and you know, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, especially since like I started watching your videos, uh, you know, when I was, it was like you, Tom Moran, Dark Den. Um, yeah. You know, and that was, and I was always a big fan of YouTube. You know, I watched a lot of Casey Neistat and, you know, uh, you know, just, I, I was watching it for it. Like just, I enjoyed watching, you know, the, I just enjoyed that. Like Philip DeFranco and, and a lot of those, you know, big YouTubers. And I, it felt like I was watching YouTube for uh, many, many years. And then also yeah. keeping tarantulas and never dawned on me, I should look for tarantula videos on YouTube, you know? Right. <laughs> and, and and not just, just care and husbandry videos. Like, you know, there's some people out there kind of vlog style stuff. So it, it was very yeah. cool coming across you and, and actually, you know, getting to talk to you in long form. Yeah. It's, it's been very cool. Well, it's, it's been cool meeting you and, um, you know, it, it's, um, it amazes me how you, uh, grew so fast and and you know where you are now what are you up to like 46 47 46 000, yeah last yeah. time i checked yeah yeah and uh i mean that's great but it's well deserved because you inspire me as far as how i do my videos because that's exactly what i wanted to start seeing is you have a more cinematic approach to it. And and I know we kind of watched some of the same um, YouTubers and you mentioned, um, oh gosh, every time I come up with a name, I keep forgetting the name, Peter. Peter, Peter McCann. McCann. Yeah, you know, and, and I learn a lot from him and I, I get you or um, premiere tips from him. And mm -hmm. I, I watch some of his stuff where he does B-roll and everything like that. But uh, I just I struggle to find the time to really sit down and record some of the things because I've you know got work and 
I, I bring my work home with me. You got to yeah. grade papers and all that kind of stuff. So, it, it, you know, I have to juggle all that. But I really enjoy the way that you lay out your videos and you've really showcased your species um, that I think that's made the world difference. And I think you've kind of set the bar a little bit higher for everybody yeah. <laughs> as far as presentation is concerned. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah, I that. I yeah, it was, I mean, that's why, I mean, I, right. I started because I, w I was like, I really enjoy these types of YouTube videos, like whether they're talking about, you know, travel videos or tech videos or something like that. And, and I was like, yeah. I also like tarantula videos, but nobody's really uh, marrying those two, you know? And I right. was like, when, I can't expect like somebody to just do that. I, I should do it myself. And, yeah. you know, it, <laughs> and it was like, I, at first I was just making videos for like the Facebook group, kind of like somebody was asking me how I build the enclosures. I'm always taking pictures of, and I was like, well, make a quick video about that, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And I was like, uh, I try to work in a little bit of cinematography somehow, you know, with my yeah. Samsung Galaxy S7, you know? <laughs> and, and it just like <laughs> I enjoyed it, and it got good response. So it, it blows my mind sometimes when I think about. Yeah. I like, oh well, God. I mean, you've definitely put in the work, and and it shows. And I mean, you deserve all the all the subscribers you have because, like I said, you've definitely raised the bar as far as you know the videos that we produce because. For the most part, if you look up, uh, you know, tarantula YouTubers, it's somebody sitting there with their little camera and just showing off what they're doing. But yeah. they're not really doing all the uh, extra B-roll and all the lighting and all the effects that you put into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really make it nice. I got something very exciting coming um, probably in the next week or so. Uh, I want to, I don't want to like blow the secret out yet, but... I mean, we're we're two hours into this thing, so I'm sure a lot of people aren't even listening anymore. But uh, yeah, uh, who knows? They they seem to, to enjoy the last one. But it's this. Yeah. Uh, it's a very special um, camera lens, and oh uh, wow! And it, it it like made very specifically, kind of for like shooting insects and inverts and stuff. And it awesome. was something I've been looking at for a while and seen some really cool videos about, and was like, man, that's so awesome! But it won't fit my camera, or uh, it's expensive and. Yeah, you know, all this yeah. kind of stuff. And it was like, that would be awesome. But yeah, you know, I don't have that kind of money and yeah. turned into a situation where somebody owed me about that much money and they didn't have the cash, <laughs> but they were like, you know, I, they had like an Amazon credit or something. And I was like, well, okay, then just buy me that then. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm not going to get the money. Like, if that's the only yeah. way I'm going to get paid. Or then I'll send Guido to come break your leg. Yeah. Right? So I was like, that, that works. <laughs> so hopefully that, that'll be coming in. And I mean, it's going to take some time to learn how to use it, but that's I think I can awesome. get some very cool shots for it. Now, yeah, I'm a, I'm a gadget nerd myself. I love getting new gadgets and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and when it's weird, like, you know, just when I like making money off uh, like YouTube ad revenue and um, just selling merchandise and stuff this year was the first time i actually had to uh show that stuff to the pe the person that does our taxes and yeah you know i was at work so my wife went as her friend as an accountant so she kind of handled it all and and i had to send her a list of you know business expenses or you know pretty much stuff that i'm spending money on and right and i'm lucky that i was not sitting in the room when my, my wife was seeing how much i've spent on cameras <laughs> Wait, and lenses and she was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, just reinvesting the money that I've made into more right. stuff. But, yeah, so uh, being able to get this lens through this way and keep it off the books so my wife doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it, when Can't it comes in, it. I'll have to show it to you because I, th yeah. I think it'll be pretty cool. Yeah, we got Halloween coming up. You always do something nice oh, yeah. for Halloween. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, can't wait Halloween. to see that one either. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious how this Halloween is going to go, though. Because I, I not our county, but where I work across the river, they are not doing trick-or-treat at all. And I was like, this uh, they're wearing masks. Like, most kids' costumes have masks. <laughs> well, what's the big deal? Right. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but even if there's no trick-or-treat, we, we're definitely going to be decorating and doing something yeah. cool. But anyways, man, it's 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 been a good conversation i've enjoyed talking yeah. to you and i really appreciate you coming on um well, is thank there you for anything asking. you want to plug before we go um no other than um you know tarantula youtubers uh saturday night takeaway that that i i love them i love their group i think more people should be watching their stuff because they have all our favorite youtubers on there you know and mm -hmm. it's a good way to interact 
But um, yeah, definitely check out tarantula cribs as well because those are tarantula specific yeah. <laughs> enclosures. Yeah, definitely. You gotta love tarantula cribs. I kind of feel like uh, the tarantula tubers Saturday Night Live takeaway. Am I saying that right? I always feel like I had a word that doesn't belong. <laughs> I keep bungling it up. They um, keep giving me a hard time about it. Yeah, it, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, like the, like stand up comics have like like this is a comedian's comedian, you know, like yeah. Doug Stanhope or uh, David Tell or something like that. Like normal people don't like them, but comedians really like them. I kind of sometimes yeah. feel like their live stream is like trans is like uh, the live the tarantula video for people that make tarantula videos you know right like, yeah it's yeah. it's fun it's, it it's doesn't enjoyable. appeal to everybody else right yeah i guess you're like oh, we yeah. want to see more tarantulas and it's like it's not about the tarantulas well, right now man it's about the people that keep tarantulas right <laughs> you know it's, they it's went cool they community. went late last night did they and uh i was they asked me to come back and i was on there and i got a phone call from a friend to come get a uh, venomous snake out of her pool. Oh wow! And if it, it, I don't, I don't know how far into it, but it's like toward, I don't know. I think it was like three, three thirty eight. Look at three thirty eight. I okay. think. And uh, yeah, I actually did a the live stream and went to her house and got the snake and then brought it back. <laughs> and I still have it. <laughs> it's a water moccasin. <laughs> oh my god! So you were you were live streaming on their stream. Capturing, capturing the snake. Capturing the snake, yeah. Oh, I definitely yeah. got to check that out. <laughs> yeah. Jojo it's it's late. It's, a, uh, it's way in there, though. It's yeah. like after I did my stream, but it's in there. <laughs> yeah. Jojo sent me a message and was like, are you coming back to the stream? And I was like, uh, uh, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't. My granddaughter yeah. came over and it was like, you know, I'd already spent so much time. Like, I, I left work early just to hop on the live stream to talk to Dark Den for a moment, then watched your live stream. And yeah. I was like, I got to spend a little time with the family. <laughs> so right. I, I, didn't, I didn't end up watching it, but I'll have to, I'll have to load it up and check it out. Yeah. We'll leave uh, links for, for anybody listening to this on YouTube. Uh, just check the description. I'll leave links to Alex's channel, uh, to Tarantula Cribs. And I'm pretty, I'll try to get all everybody we talked about. I'll leave links down there. And you can check out Pet Rock and Roll and Alternative Inverts and uh, Invert Kingdom UK. Uh, Jojo Exo Cavern. Uh, who else am I forgetting, Alex? I know there's. Uh, who else is in on that? Oh, you talking about the the tarantula tubers? Invert Kingdom UK alternative inverts. Yeah. Um, um, couch locked arachnophobia. Yes, you get that's it. Mr. Grindler's. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Uh, Grindler's creatures. I forgot about them as well. So yeah, we'll leave links to all that down below. And uh, yeah. I just wanted to say thanks again, or not thanks again, but congratulations again on. Um, that was the wrong button. Is it this one? <laughs> there we go. Congratulations again on uh, 10,000 subscribers, buddy. Uh, it's it's <laughs> awesome <laughs> stuff. <laughs> it's not like me. I'm making fun of you. <laughs> I need to label. Oh, thanks a lot. Like, I, I got, I got the, the rim shot and uh, what's yeah. this one? I can't remember what this one is. Yay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome having you, man. Uh, thanks right. again well, thank for doing this. Thank you very this. much. And, uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, make sure uh, you subscribe to Tarantula Haven on YouTube. You can also follow him on Instagram. Uh, and he's you got a Facebook page too, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So ch check that out. Stay up to date. Um, you on Twitter or anything yet? TikTok? No, no. no. And I need to. I I need to hit up that. Tickety talk stuff. Well, I, I, you might be too late, man. I think I think they shut it down. Uh, somebody, did they really? I don't know if they actually did. Somebody said that you can't if you haven't already downloaded it. They're taking it uh -huh. off Google Store stuff like. This, but there's a new oh, one. Wow. It's called Thriller. So it really did happen. I think so. I mean, it's Sunday. Unbelievable. So I haven't I haven't seen the news, but Saturday was supposed to be yeah. like the last day. But who knows wow. if it'll work out? No, I, I I checked it this morning. I'm I'm still I can still access it, but I don't know if you can right. download it now. But who knows? I'm sure hmm. there's workarounds. But yeah, yeah I'm sure it's, it'll be uh, back. Well, thanks anyways, man. It's been a lot of fun. And thank you all for listening um, to the second episode of the Exotic Pet Collective podcast. Somebody said I should call it the EPC podcast or Epic Podcast. Epic it's, Podcast. Yeah, yeah that sounds like, pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty cool <laughs> to do yeah. that. Um, if you want uh, to follow uh, Alex, he, again, he's on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. You can follow the Exotic Pet Collective on YouTube and um, pretty much anywhere that you listen to your podcast. I think um, we should be on Apple Podcast uh, in the next we. I, I say that like I have a whole company, <laughs> but we should be on there uh, any day now. But we're on Google, Spotify, all that stuff. Um, well, you guys have a wonderful evening and thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Yes. <laughs>